Hello everyone. So in today's session we are going to see about the SCADA. Fine. So let me see what is SCADA. It is supervisory control and data acquisition system. Fine. So S for supervisory, C for control and DA for data acquisition system. So we are going to see one by one like what is supervisory and what is going to do. Same for control and data acquisition also. So before getting into that, let me discuss the generalized term used in the SCADA. Right. So SCADA is a distributed measurement and control system for large scale industrial automation. Right. And it is having very huge application in automated operations like chemical manufacturing industries and all the industries we have seen so far like large scale industries like steel plant, oil and gas, mainly in the power plant and all. Right. Fine. So now before getting into that, let we all see where the SCADA is located in the industrial automation hierarchy. Right. So just see the pic. This is a hierarchy of industrial automation. It is having various level. Fine. So we are having field level. We are having control level. We are having supervising and uh, production control level. And also we are having the information level. So you just see from down field level is the first level that is the level zero. Right. So all the field instruments are located in this place. Right. The second one is the control level. Right. In that control level only we are having all the control is related with our control system. See our PLC is also there. Fine. So above that in level two only we are having SCADA. So SCADA is located in the level two of industrial automation hierarchy. Right. So SCADA is used. The Let's see the primary function of SCADA. So this is the hierarchy and let me move on to what is supervisory. Yeah. Let me see what is supervisory. This is a general English term, right? Supervisory means like a monitoring, like uh, the invigilator who is supervising the examination hall, right? And more example I can give a CCTV camera in the shopping complex. It is also supervising, right? What is happening in that premises like that. Let's see. It is a SCADA is actually developed for the universal mean of remote monitoring of the control system. This is very, very important because primary function of SCADA is monitoring. Got it? Primary function of SCADA is monitoring and that too remote monitoring. Your field may be in one place and your control room will be in one place. So you can able to monitor what is happening in your field through the SCADA system. Right. So I have one small uh, animation over here. Just have a look into that. Can you see this is the field and uh, the readings are happening in the field. Right. And you can able to sit and watch it from your control room. See here we are having the temperature value is changing. Pressure value is changing. The value in the field, the field instrument is also changing over there. The values are changing. The, rate, the rating is changing. So here in SCADA system, it is updated so that you can able to see the values over here and see the motor over here. It is turning on and turning off. See the color is changing like that. We can do some animation. Moreover, the important thing is, can you see the date and time over here? So this is the simplest example I can show you. Right. And one more thing, we are not going to stop with this. We are going to have one more example for this supervisory. Let's see that. Imagine you are having the control system in your industry. What is this? You are having a level tank and you are going to maintain the level in the tank. You are having a low level sensor, high level sensor and input valve. Right. So when the low level sensor gives signal, it will be giving signal to the controller which will make the inlet valve to open so that a water or any other liquid should flow inside. Correct now. So next when the level is increasing and when it will reach the high level sensor, it will give the signal to the controller and obviously your inlet valve should stop. This is the simplest control system. Right. So to make this control system, obviously we need to give and get signal from the controller correct and I'm going to introduce the controller like PLC. So level sensor both the level sensor are given as an input to the 
PLC and you will be doing the program inside the PLC, right? You will be doing like a low level sensor turns on, turn on a inlet valve. When high level sensor turns on, turn off the inlet valve. Like that you will be writing the ladder logic inside, right? After that, when you made a communication between this field and PLC, once you put the PLC in the run mode, automatically the program will be happening. Correct? Got it? Right. This is the simplest control system. For example, we have taken. Right. So, imagine this is in a field. So, now you want to monitor this from the control room. How? We know that is SCADA. Right. So, a SCADA is a software that you can install in a PC or laptop. Right. So, this is a normal PC I have taken here and I have installed the software inside the PC. Right. After the software installation, I need to design the process. So, this is the field. What is in the field? A tank is there, a sensor is there and valve is there. Everything I have designed in the SCADA software. See here, I have designed. Right. And I will be giving some animation over here. What is the purpose of animation means? Whenever the low level sensor turns on, it will be giving some animation here. Maybe a color change or blinking. Okay. And that animation, how it is updating means it is through the communication. Right. So, we cannot communicate directly to the field. A SCADA is not able to connect directly with the field. Whatever update it wants, it should be get from the PLC. So, PLC will be connected to the field, right? So, whatever the information, SCADA is connected to the PLC to get that, right? So, SCADA cannot be possible without a controller, okay? So, in an industrial automation, we will be using mainly PLC for the SCADA. SCADA is not possible without a controller because all the information we want will get from the PLC. Got it? So, this is how we will be monitoring. See, since the communication is made, since the communication is made, whenever a low level sensor turns on, it will give signal to the input module. Right? So, what will happen in the program that I0.0 or any other address will be turning on. Correct now? So, through that addressing, SCADA will get the update. So, this animation will also doing its work. If you have given the blinking option, it will be blinking. If you are giving the color change, it will be due the color change. Right? So, this is how we can able to supervise the field through the SCADA system. Got it? So, this is how we are going to do. So, this process is called as fully automated system. Okay. The process of monitoring the control system from the SCADA system is called as fully automated system. Fine. So, let me move on to what is control over here. The second term of SCADA is the control, right? So, generally we know what is control. If it requests, we will be taking care of the control, right? So, the secondary function of SCADA is controlling. Okay. Yeah. So, the control the process variable in the field when it requires. If it requires, we can take that secondary function of SCADA. What is the requirement? Let's see that. Example. If the sensor in the field is not working, we can operate the plant by using SCADA system. Imagine in the field... See, in the field, we are having the low level sensor, no? Imagine this is not working. If this is not working, how come a PLC can turn on inlet valve? Is it necessary to shut down the system for uh, 4 to 5 hours to repair this low level sensor? It will affect my production, right? So, I should have some option to take control from SCADA even though a level sensor is not working, I can able to turn on the inlet valve. So, how we are going to do that? Let me see that. So, this is the control system we have seen, we have designed already. So, if this is not working, I can introduce one manual on from SCADA part. Okay? And by using some memory contacts, I can able to turn on my inlet valve from the SCADA system. This is the controlling part correct so we cannot sit right see the sensor is not working so i cannot able to turn on my plant this is not good right so i should have a proper option when this goes wrong what i can do next like that i should have a proper plan and that planning we can 
get help from the SCADA. So what we can do means we can introduce one manual on or off whatever you want according to your requirement. So here for this example I have introduced the manual on. Okay. So what is the purpose of manual on? Whenever the low level sensor is not giving the signal by pressing this manual on I can make use of this button to turn on my inlet valve. So how I am going to turn on an inlet valve? By using my memory bit of PLC. So while designing the ladder logic, we will be introducing one memory contact. Okay. So that will be parallel to low level sensor. Fine. So those concepts we will be seeing when, in, when we are doing the interfacing part of PLC with the SCADA. Fine. We will be doing that in our next session. Next upcoming session, we, I will be discussing very briefly in that session, right? So by introducing a memory bit in a PLC, we can able to take care of the controlling part, right? So if we are doing the control from the SCADA part, and that is called as auto manual system. So it is not fully automated, right? Now I can also have some control. Whenever it requires, I can take part of the control. That is auto manual system so like this i can make use of the controlling function of scada when it requires can you understand what is the meaning of requirement now if the low level sensor goes faulty i can take the step that is what the requirement is okay what is the third thing of uh, scada data acquisition so generally acquisition means getting data okay so data acquisition is collecting the data what is data Nothing but a process variable. Okay. So collection the values or uh, the readings of process variables from the field. From in uh, that to in the real time. Okay. So what is that means? In a previous example, we have seen that level uh, example. No. In that we are having three things. One is high level sensor, low level sensor. Another one is inlet valve. So we will be getting information from that when the valve was on. When the sensor was giving 1, when the sensor was going 0, like that we will be getting all the information from the field and that is called as data acquisition. We are not only gathering the data, we will be storing that in the file, maybe Excel or SS or in some graphical way. Okay, so collection and storage of data is called as data acquisition. Okay, so to record the system even into the log file, even we can do the data logging also in the by using the data acquisition, right? So this is the third thing of SCADA and we have few more steps to follow. Okay, to make this complete SCADA system, what are the steps I need to follow? For example, for the same tank level uh, example, uh, we need to do the, we need to introduce the SCADA system. So what are the steps we need to do? First, design the process in the SCADA software. How your field looks like exactly you need to replicate in the SCADA software. We have tools to draw. We have some blocks to take from the symbol factory like that. We have options where we have more options in the SCADA software so that we can design easily. Okay. So that is the first step we need to do when it comes to the designing. What is the second thing means that is a tag creation. Okay. So how PLC knows this output is going to this this input is coming from this place using addressing correct now so by using that i 0.0 or q 0.0 it is get to know the input or output is coming and going to this place so like that tag tag or point is also one of the important thing in SCADA you need to create so that a SCADA can understand which input it is which output it is like addressing for plc tag or points is very important in SCADA so tag you need to create for example high level sensor may be uh, s2 and low level sensor may be s1 like that you will be creating some tag which may be alpha numeric any name you can give okay and after the tag creation we need to interlink the tags interlink of tags with the plc addressing okay so for example that s1 you have created no that's that s1 is i0.0 S2 is I0.1. Like that you will be giving the interlinking. Okay. After interlinking, we will be making the communication. So we need to make the communication between PLC and SCADA software. Okay. 
so that is very very important without communication we cannot able to get the real time update from field we can do the simulation without communication we can do the virtual simulation inside the skeda but if you want to do the real time obviously we are in need of communication between the plc so generally skeda is a software it is not a hardware skeda is completely the software if you see the components of skeda hma is one of the component of skeda because hma is a hardware and software okay the wincc we are going to see is the hma okay hma means what it is a human machine interface it is having a hardware as a panel after designing the uh, you know skeda you will be putting that in the panel you will be downloading that to the panel so that you can easily watch in that panel like atm screen okay why they have introduced the hma means they can introduce that in the field so that the operator can interact with the hma software fine so the wincc we are going to see is the hma software fine so yes so here after we are going to start with the software directly how to use the software what are the tools inside that how to do the control system how to monitor how to control so everything we are going to see in the upcoming session fine so let me meet you all in the next session until then bye Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see about Wonderware introduction. So, Wonderware is the US based company, and they are the global leader in uh, human machine interface, uh, SCADA, and the real time operation management softwares. Okay, and uh, those their products are used in industries like automotive assembly, facilities management, and uh, food and beverages, CPG, mining and metals. and uh, you can see power oil and gas chemical energy water and waste water treatment so for these industries they are using their products okay so wonderway software delivers significant cost benefit for designing building deploying and maintaining robust application for manufacturing and infrastructure operations so let's see about more about it so intech is the product of wonderware fine so whatever software skeda we are going to see is intech and there is a product of one of the product of wonderware along with few more products you can read here historian intelligence mes system platform so these all all are product of wonderware right so if you see the wonderware history it was uh, acquired by invencies in 1998 after that it was acquired by snider electric and now currently wonderware is acquired by the company called aviva fine so the next up next is in wonderware in touch we have three major programs one is application manager and another one is window maker and the last one is window viewer if you see the application manager which is organize organizer for all the projects whatever we are creating okay so it is organize the application we create it is also used to configure window viewer as as an nt service to configure network application development for client based and server based architecture to configure dynamic resolution conversion or uh, you know or distributed alarming fine so if you see window maker that is our development environment where we are developing our skeda page so window maker maker means development environment and whatever we have done in the maker we need to see right whether it is working or not whatever design we have uh, done how it looks like in the run time for that we are in need of a simulation and that part is window viewer which is run time environment which is used to display the graphic windows we have created in window maker fine it is also executes uh, you know quick script perform historical data logging and reporting uh, process alarm logging and reporting and function as a client and server for both dynamic data exchange and uh, you know link communication protocols 
fine so these are all the generalized introduction about our in touch scheda in our next session we are going to see how to create a project in in touch scheda and in the upcoming session we are going to design a scheda page for the for any application you can start with a small small application like digital ios and then analog ios trend alarms so everything we are going to see in the upcoming session i'll meet you in the next session with project creation bye Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see about project creation. So you can see in touch shortcut here, or you can go for uh, file. I mean, start in touch. So when you click on in touch, it will directly take you to the application manager. We have seen what is application manager and all, right? So it is organizer for all the projects we are. we are going to create or we have already created see i have created already three projects and uh, the first three are the demo applications it was uh, it was usually there it is a default one and right and uh, let's see how to create a new project so you can go for file new or just click on this icon new so when you click on new it is asking us to create a new application that mean what it is asking for the path so here you are going to create a project fine that project where you are going to save that is the question it is asking you can go for browse and you can select the new place and i am going to select desktop now so go for next and again it is asking enter the directory where you want to application where the application to be created click next to continue and we have pick the place called desktop fine in that what is the folder you want to create because whatever application we are creating that will be put in this folder only so i am creating a folder like ex1 okay maybe exercise 1 or example 1 or you can go for project project 1 fine go for next and this is our exact application name what is our project name fine so i am just going to create ex1 right enter the name and description of the in touch application click finish to continue just go for finish fine so if you once you have clicked the finish you can see your ex1 which is your application is created and this is the project this is the path can you see the path and even if you minimize this window and see the project 1 the folder we have created is here fine so whatever changes we are going to uh, you know do in our project will be saved in this folder hereafter got it right so go back to your application manager and just you need to double click or right click windows maker so window maker is what that is our development area just right click and do it or just double click it will take you to the window maker page just go for okay so it will take it is loading yeah so this is our window maker page fine you can see the file view special help items and all and this is the windows so to get a window you need to click on this location right click new okay we just go for file new window because in windows only we need to develop the program right if you are having multiple windows we will be keep on getting a new windows correct so i'm getting new window i'm just selecting window number 1 and whatever application you know you know properties if you want to give x location y location 
window width height whatever you want you can choose here and the window color also you can choose here okay i'm not going to change anything and let, let it be as default fine go for okay so your window is ready here is the one here is the place where you are going to write the or develop the SCADA page fine so this is the way to create a project got it i'll meet you in the next session with the menus we are having in windows maker and how to make a simple object how to design a simple object and how to do the simulation and all we are going to see in the upcoming sessions fine yeah so i'll meet you in the next session until then bye Hello everyone, so in this session we are going to see what are the menus and the options we are having in Intouch SCADA, right? This is a window maker and we have created the project. So let's see, we are having file in that you are uh, having the options like new window, open window, save, close and all, print, export options, in edit, normal copy, paste, undo window size, some link, symbol factories, options, right? So, when view, view is to, you know, check and uncheck the options, the toolbars, whatever you want to view, that an all ruler if you want to see, classic view, project view, for view, you can, you know, uncheck and check the toolbar you want to view in the development page, correct? So in arrangements, whenever you are selecting some object, you can rotate that, you can flip that, make, break, you know, making a group, alignment. These options are there in arrangement. In text, it is the format for text options and the line, the line width, the line size, type and all is there. In the special, it will for some, you know, script functions. So tag name dictionaries. So some security options are there in the specials and window properties in windows and help is help content about the software fine so below to that you are having a wizards here and this is a smart symbol wizard is here and these are all some formats okay format for uh, you know coloring uh, making the text color background color you know and this is the window it will list all the window options whatever window you are creating it will be listing over here for example if i create one new window called uh, w2 it will be listed over there as w2 fine yeah so here this is a script window so whatever script you are going to implement in your program will be listed here and these are all the script types fine so this is a script and this is the tool windows here you can get tag name dictionary find some cross reference template template for your page if you are creating anything that will be coming under this tools and uh, in the right hand side you can find some basic tools like like a line circle you know rounded rectangle normal rectangle cross mark i mean both lines horizontal and vertical lines and this is a polyline is there some polygon option is there text option is there if you want to add any bitmap images or any normal uh, you know real time trends if you want to see you can use this option and this is a historical trend and some button button option is there right so this is the overall uh, you know options we are having in a window maker and apart from that here you can see one runtime option is here so once you have developed your page you can go for this runtime so it will uh, take you to the runtime window where you can see the you know uh, output of the objects you are created in your window maker fine so if you want to take some switches and lamp I means you can go for this wizards in the wizards you can see switches here can you see 
different type of switches are there and you can see some lights also there so to get these options i mean the object you just click and click ok it will take you to put it in the development page so we here we got the switch same thing if you want to go for light light if you want means repeat last object ah, repeat last object if you are choosing it will again place you the switch because this is the last option we have taken so to take a light go to wizards again go to lights and select what type of light exactly you want i am going to take this light panel click yeah click it again in your window it will give one cursor no see if i right click and repeat last object this this cursor we are getting no like a, one uh, one horizontal and vertical line and along with the word called w it is a wizard word and where you want to keep suppose if you want to keep it here you can click this place so it will place it there by using the cursor you wherever you want you can keep it over there fine so yes like this only we need to take a objects from wizards fine so apart from that you can go for some meters meters or the speedometer dial is there thermometer is there clock is there you can put it in your uh, screen in your main page you can see put it in a page see uh, imagine a atm machine where we are withdrawing the money no so how they are designing their page they will have some digital clock over there right so you can go for some digital clocks also like this see you can keep it this is the you know digital time and this is another digital time with the date so this one and all if you are keeping in your page it looks like you know more attractive and you you know while seeing the page we can see the timing also when it goes to runtime it will be started running okay yeah so like this you can customize your page by adding the parameters you are having in symbol wizard selections fine so you are having trend and all we are going to see in our upcoming sessions button options also there you can have more buttons here momentary buttons push buttons are there see fine lights frames frames frame is for you uh, if you want to put it behind your screen if you want to put some frame and all you can choose this window controls fine sliders we are having runtime tools panels so many options are there fine so that's it. I'll meet you in the next session with uh, tag creation. Fine. So after the tag creation only we can able to do the simulation. So let's see tag creation in the next session. So practice this in the software. Just uh, take how to take a switches, how to take a lamp. You know, you can see by using the software. Fine. Yeah, I'll meet you in the next session. Bye. Hello everyone. So in this session we are going to see the tag creation in Intouch SCADA. So let's see. So I am going to use the window 1. Okay. I am not going to use this window 2. So I am going to delete that. So this is my window 1. I am going to take two objects. One is a switch. Fine. This is my switch. And one more, I am going to take a light. Let's take this light panel and keep it over here. You can change the size by dragging this. So this is switch and this is going to be my light. Fine. Yeah. So now what is the use of tag? What is the need of tag creation means? In a PLC program, whenever we are uh, uh, creating a new input and new output, we will be giving some address to it, right? 
why we are giving address it is easy to easy to identify where we need to connect the input suppose if you are connecting one push button to uh, take Alan Bradley we will be giving the address of i colon 0 slash 0 what is that i colon 0 slash 0 that is a bit right so in uh, PLC hardware you can find that port where you are connecting your push button fine so like addresses in uh, uh, you know PLC tag are important in SCADA fine by using this tag name only we can able to communicate with PLC got it so tags are like addressing part in PLC fine so how to create a tag let's see that so double click on this double click on the object for which one you want to create a tag fine double click on this it is asking a tag name directly here right so some default name is there so just delete that here you need to create a tag name so if you want to create or if you want to choose already created tag you can double click on that it will take you to the tag page so here some tags are already there but, but those are all system tags inbuilt tags those are all inbuilt tags if you see all the tags here are inbuilt tags correct there is no tag created by the user because this is the project we have created in our previous session so we have not created any tags so this is our first step to create a tag so i cannot give i cannot select the tag which is from the list right so i'm going to create a new tag now if you are going to create a new tag you need to type here just type switch any name you can give i'm just giving switch here so once you have given a switch and when you click enter when you click ok or enter it will it is asking your tag is unidentified i mean undefined because this is a new one no we have not defined it before we need to tell whether the tag is digital or analog and the property of this so since it is a new it is asking us to define right and go for ok when you click on ok it will take you to the tag name dictionary fine so in the tag name dictionary you can find the tag name as switch and here you can find the type so this is the one where you need to select whether it is a io input or it is a memory what are, what it is exactly you need to select but here you can see some default one which is memory discrete memory discrete means it is the tag which is inside the SCADA okay just click the type you are having memory discrete io discrete indirect discrete memory integer io integer so there are so much of tag types in this you need to choose memory discrete or io discrete memory discrete means it is a tag within the SCADA software fine if it is a io discrete this is the input which is coming from plc okay now we are going to do the virtual simulation virtual simulation means which is inside our SCADA we are going to do the simulation within SCADA so I'm going to choose memory discrete fine so it should be memory discrete after that you can save it you can close it that's it fine so if you click on again it will give you the tag name already you have created got it this is one way and another way is click on the object which one you want to create double click if you are going you can go with here this is common fine another way is go to tag name dictionary which you can find in the tools click on tag name dictionary here you can type your new name fine you can just type lamp you can type lamp just, this is also memory discrete save it close it fine you can go to the tag name dictionary you can give the new tag name and you can select the type save it and close it after that select your component in this double click when you double click you can select the component select the tag name here can you see lamp is already created right click on that that's it so for this switch here you are okay this was replaced okay this was replaced I'm going to write switch 
this is memory discrete only go for okay okay so there are two ways one is by right clicking this and you can do and you can type the new tag name and you can define it another one is go to tag name dictionary fine in that you can go for the new tag if you want to select new new and you can give the new name for it got it there are two ways to create a tag so this is the way to create a tag creation and uh, moreover if you want to customize this uh, switch click on that and this is the label fine this is the label you can see whatever name you have written over here is here so just give any name i'm just giving start switch and uh, here you can see on off if you want to change you can change one is gonna be zero like that you can if you want you can change and moreover color also you can change fine go for okay so it is updated oh here the name is not updated properly i have missed yes fine smart start switch one zero like that for lamp there is no option for giving uh, you know tag i mean the label right so for that you can go for this t can you see t here text click on that and place it over here and here you can type lamp fine like this you can write a label for your output got it yeah so in this in this session we have seen how to create a tag name and how to customize this switch and how to customize the lamp and how to select the switches here and how to use it got it so i'll meet you in the next session with one simple example to do the virtual simulation until then bye Hello everyone. So in this session, let's start doing the virtual simulation. So let's take one small example for uh, you know digital system. Whenever we are turning on a switch, a lamp need to turn on. So this is the simulation we are going to see. So before that, I'm going to draw the outline for our page. So I have taken the polyline here and just start from here. Drag it towards right. Click and drag it towards down. Click, drag it towards left. Click again, drag it towards upside and join over here. Just double tap, it is finished. Fine. And uh, take a text and keep it over here and just type virtual simulation fine if you want to increase the font size you can go here can you see enlarge fan font font type if you want to change you can go for text font in this you can choose whatever uh, you know uh, model i mean style you want I'm not going to change anything let it be that's it fine if you want to more customize you can choose these options bold italic underline whatever you want fine so right let's start our virtual simulation part so for that I'm going to take one switch let's take a knob kind of switch and keep it over here and let's take one lamp I mean light let me take circular light okay keep it over here fine so whenever you are turning on the switch this light is going to on got it so for this this is the uh, you know two two components we are in need one switch one lamp that is done what is the next step we need to create a tag correct so how to create a tag 
there are two ways we have seen in the last session right so what i'm going to do means i'm going to use the first way just click on the switch just type sw1 fine i'm just typing sw1 and clicking enter it is asking me to define it so click ok and choose memory discrete already it is there so i'm going to save it and i'm going to close it that's it so for this i have given sw1 so for this i'm going to create one more new tag like l1 and uh, this this fill color now what is this fill color means whenever we are going for online what it should be like uh, uh, in zero means what color it should give in uh, green what color it should give like that fine so just go for l1 and click on ok define it this is also memory discrete go for save and go for close so now we have created uh, two tags got it so let's go for runtime and watch so for runtime what we need to do we need to click on this once you are done with your design click on this runtime it will take you to the window viewer page okay this is a window viewer page so if you see the option over here it will it is like a development it will take you to the development page if you click on that okay first let's do the simulation now i'm going to turn on the switch but lamp is not showing any changes right color changes is not there if you turn off nothing is happening if it is on nothing is happening fine is it nothing is happening right so just go to the development and see what is the error okay so i'll tell you what is the error here because i have known the thing is whenever we are doing a virtual simulation we need to use the same tag name what is the tag name here i have mentioned sw1 here i have mentioned l1 correct where we are creating the connection between these two components how come our skeda software knows whenever sw1 is on turn on l1 okay l1 is the tag name of our lamp right we have not created any such links so how come a software knows that's what whenever you are going for the run time this is not happening see our lamp is not at all responding because whenever the switch is on the lamp color need to turn on to green color correct but it's not happening because there is no connection between switch and lamp so when it comes to virtual simulation you need to give the same tag name if it is switch 1 if it is sw1 this also sw1 okay so just give sw1 and if you want you can change the color if it is zero it is red if it is one it is green so it is a default one i'm going to go with the default one okay just click okay now go for run time turn on can you see your lamp is on correct because both are sharing the same address now we have created the link turn off it's off color is changing correct so that's it so this is how you need to do the virtual simulation fine so whenever you want to turn on a lamp use you know switch you want to turn on a lamp using the switch you should use the same tag name fine so let's take one more switch type let's take the fixture switch like a toggle switch here keep it over here fine let's take one more lamp let's take a rectangle you know light panel keep it over here fine so now let's give this as l1 l1 we have already created and the same l1 i'm giving here okay fine go for online now turn on this is the off condition okay when you turn on it is showing green color same because these two are sharing the same address these two are sharing the same address fine so this is the way to use the digital components 
fine turn off this that's it suppose if you are taking one more light let's take a siren kind of keep it here and for this this is the input means you need to give the same tag whatever you have used for this what is the tag we have used for that sw1 correct go for ok run time click this both will be on fine got it this is a simple digital control system fine yeah and one more option is there is that you have noted this enable blink what is this enable blink means whenever we are going for the runtime only color is changing right if you want you can give for the blink option also okay just click enable blink and it is asking enable when this is also the tag you need to give okay enable i mean whenever you, when you want blink and just give same for same tag you want the blink option okay whether it is slow medium fast this and all is your requirement i'm just giving medium go for okay go for run time yeah can you see the round circle is blinking now this is not blinking because we have not given anything fine and if you want to give label to these two you can give right yeah just go to development page and if you want label select the text give the label here l1 and this is also l1 now this is switch one right yeah this is l1 this one is l1 just select that drag and keep it to say enlarging Yes, just copy and paste it. Keep it here. Okay. This is L1 and this is some lamp you can, whatever name if you want to give, you can give lamp 1. And right click, repeat last object, lamp 2. Fine. Same, repeat last object. I am going to give this as lamp 3 that's it fine got it so in our next session let's see how to create a simple analog control system fine yeah so just practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session bye Hello everyone, in this session we are going to see about analog control system, simple analog control system, okay. So in the previous session we have done this uh, digital control like a turn on and turn off the lamp using a switches, right. So for analog we are going to get help from a slider and bar. So let's see where is the slider, click on the wizard, you can see slider option here, right. So take vertical slider or vertical mouse slider. Anything you can take. Okay. So I am just taking the vertical slider and keep it in our page. Fine. Right. So for the corresponding output, I am just going to take any meters. Meter you can take. Right. Or... Uh, you can yeah i'll just take the meters just take panel meter or thermometer you can take for the time for next you know once you are done with this we'll select the remaining meters fine so what i'm going to do means whenever i'm changing the slider value 
we are going to see the changes in the meter fine so this is the example we are going to do in a analog virtual simulation fine so two components we have taken so what is the next step exactly it is a tag creation fine so just click on a slider and just type the analog tag name whatever tag name you want to create you can i'm just uh, creating this as a uh, level okay so whenever i'm increasing or decreasing the level of the slider it is going to have the influence in the meter okay and uh, this is the level tag i have given and this is asking the label label here it is less slider right so if you want you can change let it be here fill color and this is the color fill color is red and the text color is blue can you see here and this is a slider range can you see the slider is starting at 0 and ending at 100 the same thing if you want to give us 200 or 1000 whatever it may be you can give over here fine and this is the tick marks like a major and minor division can you read here 1 2 3 and that is major and minor division the scale range okay it is started counting as 0 20 40 no if you are changing this it will be changing over here i'm going to fix with the default one okay and uh, this is the display the label for every one major division text color this text color it is black no that is what fine and the decimal point is 1 because that is point zero, point 0.0 everything is there if you have given 0 and click ok and define ok so once you have click on ok for defining level since it is a new tag name it is asking us to define so what is this uh, level it is not a memory discrete no because memory discrete is only for digital input and outputs now since it is the analog you you need to choose the memory real okay see whenever you are taking a slider and giving the tag name automatically memory real is the default chosen one so don't change anything it is memory real okay save it close it now see the decimal point is moved since i have given zero here since I have given 0 here, it is updated. Fine. Right. So, we have created the tag name called level for the slider. Same go for meter. Give the same tag name. I am just giving level. Or already level was created. No. So, double tap on this. See, if you are typing here, we may give any, we may, uh, you know, spell, spelling mistake may happen. Fine. So just double tap and select the level here. Can you see these are all the tags we have already created. So from this you can choose what are the tag you want to give to the meter. I am just creating the level. I am just selecting the level and click OK. Click OK. So this meter is also level now. If you want to customize this meter. If you want to customize any text color if you want to change. You can change. In the inside color if you want to change you can click ok you will see the update here fine so just go to runtime yeah so slider is 0 meter is also 0 if you increase the slider automatically your meter is also increasing see for meter we have given the blue color no that's what it is bit you know dull I think you can if you see bit uh, you know close you can see the difference can you see it is also increasing it is increasing it whenever you are decreasing it is it is also decreasing i'll do one thing i'll just change the color double tap on this fill color let it be some fluorescent color yellow will choose yeah go for it go for online yeah now increase yeah can you see your meter is also increasing fine so whenever you are decreasing your meter is also decreasing right so this is simple analog control system and uh, instead of meter instead of meter take some other uh, panel okay go for wizard go for meters go for the speedometer dial keep it over here fine 
then go for online uh, first we need to tag it no click on this give the same tag name double tag select level okay go for runtime so just increase can you see your speedometer is also increasing yeah so it is 100 so it is 100 here but the speedometer scale is for 1000 correct so just decrease it will take back you to zero here okay go to development page click on the meter and minimum and maximum change this to 100 once you have changes to 100 and click ok can you see 0 to 100 is now fine now if you go to runtime see it will not scale automatically ok it will not scale automatically if you are changing this to 0 to 100 it will not scale up to 1000 0 to 1000 it will not scale whatever range you are changing in the slider will be changing in the meter also now increase yeah now you can see the meter is moving very fast because we have changed the scale yeah, that's it fine if you decrease automatically it will decrease right so if you want you can you know practice with some other meters also can you see led meter is there panel meter is there you can put it in the you know developer page and you can choose moreover if you want to have one more slider you can choose go for slider choose this slider and take pick it keep it over here okay so both the sliders are almost uh, same only but it is having that release option so click on the slider give some new tag name I'm just giving level 2 this is new one so define it memory real is already there save it close it and take one new meter take a meter let's take this LED meter keep it over here click on this choose the same tag name you have given to the new slider i have given a level 2 and for this range is 0 to 100 click on this go for runtime now if you increase this you can see the changes in meter yeah it is not happening let's see what is the yeah oh yeah yeah the thing is the difference is this is the slider no if you release even see you can see the changes now itself and just keep on dragging but you can see the changes here but this will be updating the changes once you release it that is the difference between this slider and this slider see i'm dragging but it is not updated in your meter correct can you see the meter is not updated here if you release it it will update fine that is the difference between these two sliders according to your value it is showing the color range so this is a full color full range for 0 to 100 since it is 80 it is updating up to this if it is 100 it is updated fully got it so this is the simple analog control system i will meet you in the next session with another topic just practice this in the software right bye Hello everyone, in this session we are going to see working of some push buttons and uh, momentary contacts like that, fine. So for that just go to wizards, in the button option you can see, can you see momentary button and uh, 
you can see normal button with led button with light set and reset display and normal round push button you can see color push button check box radio button so there are so many types of buttons okay so according to the requirement you can choose whatever you want so let's take this round push button round panel push button i'm taking just click it okay and place it place it in a page fine so for this i'm going to take one light let's take one circular light and place it over here so just tag it now i'm going to tag switch as a tag fine this one we have already created in the previous session just watch out this push button it is having normal fill color zero means red one means fluorescent that is fine can you see some action over here in action it is having six types one is set reset toggle direct reverse so you can able to select the function fine for example if i choose toggle okay i'm i'm preferring the toggle and just click okay go for this lamp and just tag the same tag right click okay go for run time now since i have given the toggle if i click it will on if i again click it will off it is toggling between 1 and 0 right this is 1 and this is 0 right so this is toggling this is toggling and what is this set set means only it will turn on okay it will not turn off fine so if you are doing the set function you need to have one more button for reset let's see that so i am clicking set option for this button and i'm just clicking okay take a copy of this take a duplicate of this and keep it over here click on this for this just click reset so this one is set i have done and this one is reset got it yeah just go for run time now set see if i click again nothing is happening because once it is set means it's set so for reset you need to press this reset this is set this is reset fine so this is set reset and toggle three things we have seen right and two more are pending so just delete this one go for this and two more is pending what is this direct and reverse fine so i'll just select the reverse first i'll select the reverse go for okay go for run time so when you click reverse initially the push button is in off state correct so if you press once it will go to on fine so we have selected the reverse option when i go for the run time it is in a off condition if i press it went to on if i again press it acts like a push button see in the main condition is 1 if i press it will go to 0 if i release it will come back to its 1 so this is the reverse option fine see so i'll go to the development page i'll come again it is maintaining the previous state okay so for this just take one more option as direct so let's see what exactly the direct is going to do so direct means go for run time can you see since i have selected direct it is in a on condition if i press it will go to off condition if i again press it is like a momentary it acts like momentary okay so this is direct and reverse i'll take one more new button and i'll tell both okay so take this keep it over here make it bit big take a duplicate of this fine so take a duplicate of this lamp i'm going to create this is our switch 
I have selected reverse for this or first one is direct let it be direct and for this already switch is there and for this one I am going to select one more tag SW1 and I am giving reverse for this ok and for this I am just going to give SW1 fine so this one is direct this one is reverse so since I have given direct to this it is in off state and this is in on state so this is direct and this is in this is reverse I'll just type here direct so that you can see the difference what is this direct and reverse what it is exactly doing and all yeah so go for run time so since it is a initial condition okay direct reverse fine just a minute yeah here I have selected reverse here I have selected direct got it so remaining or not for this it's a different uh, tag and this is a different tag just go for online first for direct I'm making this to yeah so it acts like push button now and for this can you see can you see the difference the reverse means it is maintaining the one state okay direct means it is maintaining the zero state and if I press it will go to one and reverse means if I press it will go to the zero to one okay so direct and reverse is depending upon what it is exactly maintaining direct is maintaining zero and reverse is maintaining one if I press it will go to zero if I press it will go to one that is the difference between direct and reverse so one more thing is there that is equivalent switch is equivalent key equivalent so for that I'll take some one more switch one more button I'll keep it over here okay just delete these two since we have seen the topic okay take a duplicate of this fine so I'm going to give switch for this same tag switch keep it as a switch and this is also switch okay and I'm going to delete this one yeah this is switch fine so all the three parameters are switch now what is this key equivalent means for example take the button make this as set okay and there is an option called key equivalent here if you press key equivalent here you are having some options like control shift and some keys so now I am just going to select a key like uh, F1 I will select just F1 so what exactly key equivalent will do when you go to, go to runtime so if you want to press you will be keeping the cursor over there and you will be pressing that right so ap apart from that we are having one more option when you go to online just press F1 automatically the button will get set so it's like a shortcut okay so for set option I am gi giving F1 so take this button and take this as reset and key equivalent I am taking some F2 okay so for reset F2 for set it is F1 right so just go to online okay see my cursor is here I am not keeping over here okay my cursor is here press F1 automatically it is on press F2 it is off see my I am not doing over here right so what what if if I do this this is also work this is set this is reset apart from that shortcut is also there that is F1 for set and F2 for reset and the and the key equivalent option you can select see control option is also there shift is also there for example if you select this if you select control plus f1 then in online in runtime if you press f1 nothing will happen if you need to press control plus f1 okay now normal f2 so for on I have set control plus f1 so for off I just given f2 right so th like this you can get key equivalent also so, there are so many uh, features are there 
according to the requirement you can choose however you want fine so you are having you know few more buttons are also there see button with led button with light so just try out this in the software so same button with led i'll just show you that so make the same tag switch i'm giving here also set reset toggle everything is here okay so now it is toggling fine go for online okay see if you press it is giving the color indication okay if you press it again there is no color indication so this color indication you can choose here can you see so i'll make this to fluorescent color and for zero i'm just giving red color okay so i have given the toggle option here okay so that's what you can able to do both on and off see now it is red color zero if i turn on it is in green color right so it is like a led indicate indication button so that you can get to know by seeing this whether it is on or off and this text also you can change fine so according to the requirement you can customize the inputs fine so just practice this in the software i'll meet you in the next session with another interesting topic bye hello everyone in this session we are going to see about symbol factory so what is symbol factory so you can find more graphics from symbol factory for example see this this switch this gauge slider these and all we we got it from this wizards right so in this wizards we are having very less option see in a button we are having very less options clock is there frames lights meters panels like that we are having very less options suppose if i want a sensor kind of symbol where i can get if i want conveyor if i want motor right if i want uh, you know uh, like a uh, big machines right so if i want uh, you know vehicles if i want some you know nature clips like uh, trees for that and all where i can get so for that we are having a option called symbol factory so in the wizard itself you can find symbol factory so if you click symbol factory another one option is here that is symbol factory fine so just select that and click okay and keep it in your window just click in your development page so once you click it will take you to the wizard page okay so see here in the categories categories is having so many menus right see it is having 3d push buttons and the options are here so how you want which push button you want according to the requirement of your project you can choose some slider is there throw switch is there right can you see selector switch is there see same for air conditioning so these are all the symbols related to this air conditioning okay see architectural uh, you know some menus are there see cap is there and arrows basic shapes blowers boilers building chemicals chemical related so these are all the machines related to chemical industry can you see chemical process some blender is there chemical mixing tank is there fine so computer hardware let us see we have talked about the sensors and motors no i'll show you the motors see motors motor option is there and few motors are also here fine so what what exactly you want i want this this type of motor or this type of motor simple motor or this one i want whatever you want you can choose fine so let's take one motor now 
let's take a simple motor like this i'll take so how to select how to get that to our development page means select whatever you want i'm selecting this simple motor and just click okay so that's it it came to your window right so if you want to repeat the process you can go to symbol factory again through this wizard or just right click repeat last object again it will take you to the symbol pack factory page so let's take this keep it here that's it again if you want to repeat repeat last object right click repeat last object so now i'm going to take a sensors let's take a sensors yeah i'm having a sensors here see so many types of sensors are there pressure transmitter is also there fine so i'm going to take this sensor type 2 let's take that click that's it fine so you can uh, arrange according to the animation you are creating or how how your project design exactly you can place it according to that fine right so this is how we need to take a uh, symbols from symbol factory got it so even you can get some con conveyors also i'll show you conveyors symbol factory click this you can search here in the categories itself you can search for the main name like uh, see here conveyor belt yeah there are so many conveyor belts are there fine see so i'm going to take this one this one i'm going to take yeah you can you know enlarge it according to the requirement yeah, i'm just keeping this to fit into this page okay yeah that's it it's done fine so let's keep this motor here yeah so when i keep this motor towards uh, you know uh, above this uh, one the motor went to back side so just click this conveyor belt right click back front correct so send to back so that your motor is visible now fine so this is like a arrangement or alignment correct so let's keep this here and if you want this motor you keep it or else i'll just keep it over here yeah like that you can arrange fine so let's take one more container one more object container can you see the container here yeah so you can take let's take a box yeah let's take this box that's it make it bit small and keep it over here fine so you can move the boxes through some animation right that's not we are going to see in the forthcoming session so like this you can arrange the objects depends upon the design fine right so whether like how we have given the properties to this uh, switches how this is changing the color because we have given a color here no like that shall we give some options to these objects which we have taken from symbol factory yes options are there that is the animation right for example see this box need to move from this place to this place obviously i can do the animation by using some movement or location option same thing if the object is present here this sensor need to blink like a job in sensor fine that case i can give the blink option to this sensor same this motor need to blink when the box is moving that time also you can give the blink option to these motors so like that we can give animation link to the symbol factory symbols but one thing see if i click on uh, yeah if i click on this it will again take me to the symbol factory page see if you click right click if you take to the properties it will again take you to the symbol factory page so how to get into the animation property page of this sensor that is one important step we need to do whenever you are taking a symbol from symbol factory just right click cell or symbol there is a option no cell bar symbol in that just break it okay what i have done is i have 
just click on the object right click this one cell or object in that i have clicked break cell already okay so now if you click on your sensor it will take you to the animation property page see before that it was not came no see i'll i'll tell i'll show you here this is also the object i have taken from symbol factory click on this see it will take you to the symbol factory page suppose if you take this it will take you to the animation because i have done the break cell so for this also if you want to give some animation right click cell bar symbol break cell okay for this motor also you are going to give the blinking you know we have a plan right so right click break cell this is also right click break cell so whatever object you want to give the animation you should break it so for this conveyor i am not going to give anything this conveyor is going to be like a constant it's not going to uh, i'm not going to give any animation property to the con uh, you know conveyor so i'm not going to break it okay so yes so this is how we need to take a symbol factory symbols and we need to give that break cell option to give the animation option um, animation link to get into the animation link we need to break it got it so this is only for the symbol factory symbols for example i have taken some symbol from this tools okay see i have taken something like this click on this it will directly take you to the animation link this is animation link page okay so for the remaining symbols it will go to the animation page but for symbol factory there is a only way got it yes so i'll meet you in the next session so in that we are going to start a animation properties fine so just practice this symbol factory uh, you know session in the software until then i'll meet you in the next session bye Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see the page navigation. Fine. So, what is this page navigation? So, if you have, uh, you know, we are using the ATMs, right? So, in the ATM screen, whenever we are inserting the card, it will it will give some various options, right? Whether we need to withdraw or whether we need to deposit, some options will be there. ATM pin change or some phone number change. so many options are over there so if you press one option it will take you to the another page correct so at last like it is like it will take you to next next pages according to the option we are selecting so like that it, that is page navigation okay so like that in skeda also we can create multiple pages so w1 is the one we have created so this is the home page this is the first page okay so if you want to create a new one you can go for right click new and you can give the new page name i'm just giving w2 okay so w1 is already we have some components in w2 is the new one right so if you go to run time so just imagine i'm just giving some object here okay i'm just giving one option here so just go to run time it is giving you the page where i have what we have in the development page correct see in the development page i am having this so in a run time it is coming fine suppose in the in the development page i am having this if you go for the run time it is still in the w2 correct so how to go to the first page now so this is window 2 window 2 is the last created page only it is showing correct so how to go to the first page that is a question one option here is whenever you you can find a file option here can you see the file option in file option just click file open window in that you can see w1 right you can click okay so it will give you this page fine so like that you can do the page navigation like open window again W two, if you want, you can select 
and you can go for it or you, you have the option to select all select all click ok fine so that means if you want to go to the second page you are having this option only okay right so this is one way so apart from this file apart from this file open window option is that any other option is there means yes option is there that is we can call it as go to button or show window button okay i'll show you how to do that so just close this or make this one close okay window has been saved yes right if you go for online it will show you your main page okay yeah so what is this go to option means just get a button over here can you see the button here one option is there no at last one button is there so i am just keeping it over here fine and uh, just click on that button when you click on that button you are having the animation link page in the animation link page in the touch push buttons option there is a option called show window can you see show window click on that and select w2 so what exactly it is meaning means when you click this button it will take you to the window 2 okay just click okay fine click okay go for run time just click this it will take you to the w2 window 2 got it so from window 2 to window 1 how to go again we need to have one button here to go to the window 1 so let's create that so go to this page have one button click on this button same procedure when you click on animation link go to show window in that select w2 w1 sorry this is w2 from this page you need to go to w1 so you need to select this and click ok fine click ok so just close this save it yeah go for run time if you click on this it will take you to the second page if you click on this it will take you to the first page so this is page navigation okay so this is how you need to go to one page to another page and there is a text over here now so shall we change this name yes we have an option so let's see where it is right click this there is an option called substitute correct go for this substitute string yeah so here you can change so i'm just typing the w2 click ok so it is changed to w2 so if you click this it will take you to the w2 page click on this same right click substitute substitute string and here i'm just typing w1 or home screen whatever you want you can type fine now save close go for run time so some operation you are doing so after that if you want to go to the second page click on this yeah here is some operation you are doing again go to first page yeah so this is how we need to do the page navigation so for how many pages you can create you can create more windows also for all the windows whenever you want to navigate from one page to another page you need to use this show window option can you see show window it is in touch push buttons fine so yeah so just practice this page navigation in the software i'll meet you in the next session another with another interesting topic bye
Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to start the animation links. So, what are the animation we are having in uh, the animation link page? We are going to see one by one from this session, right? So, I am going to start with the location. Fine. So, let's see what is that location. So, for that, I am just going to have one line. Okay. I am going to have one line. I am just name that as A and uh, this one as this point is B. Fine. Yeah. So, I am going to have one more box here. Keep the box like this. Fine. Right. So, I am going to get help from a slider. Take a slider. And keep it over here. Fine. So, what is this location means? You can move this object. Whatever object you want, you can move from one place to another. That is a location. Fine. So, just click on the box. It will take you to the animation page. And here, you can see the option called location. Right. So, this location may be vertical or horizontal. Okay, so you can use vertical or you can use horizontal or sometimes you can use both, right? So, let's see the horizontal first because I have drawn a line here, uh, the point A to B. So, I want to move this object from A to B, fine? So, for that, I'm just going to give, uh, you know, whenever I'm moving the slider from 0 to 100, this movement is going to happen. So, for that only I have taken a slider, okay. Why I have taken a slider is, I am moving a slider from 0 to 100, that time it will be doing the movement. It, it should need some input, no. For that input I am taking a slider, fine. So, I am just going to give a slider uh, tag as level which we have already created in the previous sessions, fine. You can see 0 to 100 as a, you know, uh, in a scale, just go for OK. Right, so this is level and same tag name I need to give to this object. So let's take a horizontal movement first. Fine, let's take a horizontal movement. So just click horizontal movement. When you click horizontal movement, it will take you to the one window which is having uh, options like expressions, value, horizontal movement, some options are there. What is this expression means? When this box need to move, for which parameter or which tag this is going to move, it is asking. So, just double tap on this and select the same tag, whatever we have given to the slider. Just select this level. Okay, we have selected level. And uh, you can see the value. So, what is this value means? What is the minimum and maximum range you are giving to the input? That is exactly this one. Okay. So, the boxes you are seeing in the left side, this left and right and this is like minimum and maximum range. This should be depends upon your input. See, for slider I have given 0 to 100, right? Same thing, it is also 0 to 100. Okay? So, the box is moving from this A to B. So, that's what left side is 0 and the right side is 100. Fine? Yeah. So, the next, this option, what is this option is, how long it should go, that is very important, right? Like, for example, here I have given A, right? And uh, behind, I mean, behind the screen, I cannot move this, yeah, I cannot move this. So, in the behind this box, you are, you have seen that uh, B point. So, I want to move the object from A to B, but how come a software knows about this A to B? I need to tell that, correct? So, that is this range. For example, 0 to 100 is the default to 1, correct? 0 to 100 is the default to 1, just go, go for it, 0 to 100 let it be, I will tell you what is this 0 to 100, we will go for or online, I mean runtime. Just click OK, just click OK, see, now the horizontal options we have given, no? So it is checked in, just click OK, fine, just go to runtime, see, I am going to move this. I am just changing. Can you see the box is moving? The box is slowly started moving. 
Yeah. See, the slider reached 100, but the box is up to here only. Correct? But my B point is here. Right? So, what is that 100 is this one only. So, it is considering this place as 0 and this place as 100. So, it is stopping here. If you want to move the object up to this place means you need to measure from what is the length of this. You need to measure and you need to give the corresponding value. Let's do that. Okay. Just make it back to its 0th place. Go for development. I will tell you. See now you can see the x and y axis here. Okay. You can see x and y axis. See my cursor is moving. According to my cursor position, it is showing the X range and Y range. Okay. Just see, I will keep the cursor here. Can you see what is X? It is 50. Correct. It is 50. Keep it over here. What is X now? It is 740. Let's round it to 750. Yeah, now it is 750, right? So, 50 difference of 750. What is the range? It is 700. Correct. So, the box need to move for 700. So, click on this box. Go to horizontal. Instead of 100, give 700. Okay. Give 700. Click OK. Click OK. Go for online now. I mean run time. Now, increase the slider. Can you see your box is moving a bit fast? Yeah, that's it. See, it is moved up to 700. 700 is this one. It is crossing the end because it was 740. I just round it to 750. No, so it is moved here. Fine. It is calculating this place. This is 750. Okay. If you want to calculate up to this, you need to increase the range. Got it? So this is how we need to give the horizontal position. Horizontal movement. Fine. Right? So, imagine the duplicate of this box and just take a duplicate and keep it over here. The box is here and this box need to move towards left side. Okay. So, default one is going towards right. Correct. Going towards right. Fine. So, now I want this box to move towards left. So, for that what I need to do? Go for same horizontal. Just change this this should be 100 towards left to no so that should be 100 it is starting at right hand side so that should be 0 okay same thing this should be 700 and this should be 0 fine i just made just opposite to this box i just changed the position of this so now click okay okay go for online now see, this box will move towards right, this box move towards left. Because for this box I made left side as 0. For this box I have made right side as 0. Just check it out. That's it. See, at one point both are meeting, no? Yeah. Can you see? That's it. So this is how we need to use the horizontal moment. Got it? Understand? This is the simplest way. Fine? Suppose this box need to move from this place to this place. What you will give? Whatever we have done here, right? Whatever we have done here, same thing we need to do to, the, do to that box. Shall we do that? Yeah. Go to window 1. This is level. This is same slider. This is the same, same slider. I have given the same tag. Just click on this box. Go to horizontal. Now, I have already used this horizontal location. No? So, it is taking the default range. So, make it is 0 to 100. And this 0. And approximately how long it will be? Let it be like 550 or something. I will just give 600. Okay. We need to measure it. We need to measure this one and this one. We need to get the difference. But I am just giving some random value. I am just approximately calculating and I am giving. Okay. Go for. Okay. Okay. Run time. Go for window 1. Now increase this. 
can you see the box is moving yeah yeah so it is exceeding because 600 means it is exceeding we will decrease that 600 i have given 600 here no so it is exceeding so just give 450 okay 450 go for okay okay go for runtime increase this yeah so i have given 450 so exactly it is stopped here so this is 450 okay so how i am calculating this 700 600 450 depends upon the axis see here keep the cursor here check out the x value here okay what is x value 510 right the box was approximately stopped here right so it is maybe 1010 so what is the difference 510 correct if it is 450 means it will be here 510 means here correct so i'm just taking the difference of x and x scale x range here and x range here take a difference and give the value over there fine so yeah so this is horizontal location fine the same thing we are having the vertical location also fine so i'll teach you in the next session fine so just practice this in a software we'll meet you in the next location uh, you know next session with this vertical location fine thank you Hello everyone, in this session we are going to see the vertical location. So in the previous session we have done the horizontal location, right? So we need to select the tag and we need to give the range, correct? So I'll just give 600 now. Just check it out how, how, how long it is going. Increase it. It is stopped over there. So we need to increase a bit. Fine. Let it be that. And now I am going to take one more box and keep it over here. Okay. Let's take it small. Yeah. This box at B position. And this box I want to move to C. C is here. Fine. So for this it is a vertical right. So, horizontal means that will be the x axis and vertical it will be y axis. Correct. So, for y axis we need to bother about this range, this y scale. This is x range, this is y range. Okay. Just watch it out here. What is y now? 60. Correct. Now, y is 70. Let it be 70. And just move the cursor and keep it over here. Now, it is 570. So, 70 difference of 570 is 500. Keep it in mind, this number is 500, okay? Just click on this. Whatever we have done for horizontal, same procedure only, okay? Select vertical. So, in horizontal, we have selected this. In vertical, we need to select this. That's it. Go for it. Select the tag. And instead of 100, here you need to give 500. That's it, okay? This one, no need to change. Because whenever you are changing the slider from 0 to 100, this box need to move vertically from 0th position to 500 position. Can you see here it is up and down. Up it is 0. Down it is 500. So it is moving towards down. Go for it. Go click on OK. OK. Fine. So I will just increase this also. Yeah. Go for run time. Now increase this. Just watch this box. Just watch this box. Yeah. Can you see the box is moving towards downside? Yeah. So it is moving towards down up to 500. Okay. So this is vertical movement. Fine. So take a duplicate of this. Keep it here. Now what is the use of this box? This need to move towards 
upside from C to B it should move for that what we need to give click on this go for same vertical so in up give 500 in down it should be 0 that means this is 0 to the point towards up it should be moved towards 500 ok here also this should be 100 and the slider range is 0 yeah so 0 0 when 500 and this is 100 whatever we have done in the previous session for the you know horizontal same procedure ok go for run time yeah increase can you see one box is this box is moving down and this box is moving up fine that's it if you decrease the slider it will it will go back to its original place okay yeah like this fine so this is vertical movement and uh, for the box also you can give vertical movement you can uh, you know keep one more conveyor here that box is moving from this place to this place like that you can do so let's do that go to development page keep this here take one conveyor symbol factory Since I have taken this from symbol factory, make a break cell or just right click, break it. Okay, now just flip it. Yeah, I'm just rotating. So imagine some some conveyor is coming from this side. Or instead of conveyor you can have some line okay I have taken this conveyor just flip it again you just select however you want I just want one vertical line like this so you can go for some other options also if this is not suiting well so i'm going for some other option and go for yeah i'll take just take this keep it here delete this break it first make a rotation yeah keep it here fine so I am keeping the box here. This box need to move from up to down. Fine. Just make the box to come front. Yeah. So click on this box. Instead of horizontal, click vertical. So vertical towards down. So let it be 0. And this is going to be 100. Okay. See how in which direction it is moving. According to that you need to change this. Okay. So now let it be as 100 and this gonna be, um, we need to measure it. So approximately I'll just give 500. Go for OK. Go for run time. Just increase this. You can see the slider. The box is moving. Correct? Yeah. See since I have given 500 it is moving more. So we need to reduce it. We, it should keep here. So up to that we need to choose. Okay. So let's measure it and give the proper value. So now the box is here no. What is the extra y range? It is 100. And here it is 410. So approximately I will take 400. Okay. So I will take 400 or I will just give 3. I will just give 390. Go for OK. OK. Go for run time. Just increase this. Yeah, yeah, still it is going down. 
so we need to bit reduce it so we'll reduce and come back so i have given 390 no so just give 350 or just 340 let give go for okay okay go for run time now check yeah and still we need to reduce see this much we need to reduce if we measure properly then it will be no issues like approximately since we are giving it is taking like this okay yeah somehow yeah exactly it is matched now okay so like this also you can do this is vertical see exactly it is keeping again you can if you want you can go for horizontal options also fine so this is horizontal and vertical location we have seen so apart from this we have we can able to do this one also what is that mm, diagonal also see when you click on this you are seeing only vertical and horizontal correct but we can do horizontal uh, what is uh, diagonal also so how to do that we'll see in the next session okay so for that we need to combinely we need to give both horizontal and vertical okay see if you want x axis you will give just a horizontal movement if you want y axis you will give vertical movement if you want both diagonal means what x and y no so that time you should give both the locations so that i'll teach you in the next session okay yeah so just practice this vertical location in the software i'll meet you in the next okay in the next uh, session right so bye hello everyone so in this session we are going to see the diagonal movement so in the previous sessions we have seen horizontal and vertical so for diagonal we need to give both the locations so i have uh, taken this line to join this a point and c point uh, let's take a new box and keep it over here so this new box need to move from a location to c location fine so this is diagonal right so how to do that so what is this diagonal it is a x and y axis right so this is horizontal we have given so this is just x axis only so we have chosen horizontal and this one is y so it will be vertical y axis so it is vertical so this is x y axis so that's what it is diagonal so you need to give there is no diagonal movements you know separately see if you click on this there is no diagonal it is having only vertical and horizontal so you need to give both to get the x and y axis fine so for that just to measure the x value uh, just find the difference of x value and y value first check what is x what is x it is 50 right measure here it is 700 or let keep it over here or let it be 700 okay so that is 50 this is 700 what is the difference 650 correct so for x the difference is 650 so let's measure y what is y now it is 110 so let's take that as 100 okay 100 and what is y now it is 580 what is the difference it is 480 correct so just click on this go for horizontal level let it be less level and what is the value we have measured as a difference 650 correct so for vertical same level what is the you know difference we have seen this 480 right so i forgot let's check it out again so it is 100 and this is 570 yeah, approximately it is 580 so the difference we have given is 480 okay so same thing for horizontal how we are measuring we measured and we have put 
for vertical how we have measured the same thing we have done but for this object both horizontal and vertical both are there see if you take this this is having only horizontal if you take this this is having only vertical but if you take this one it is having both so that we can make a diagonal okay just go for run time yeah measure it now just increase it yeah can you see it is moving diagonally fine that's it this is how we need to move the diagonal location so how about the object let's take a duplicate of this if the object is in this location what you will do whatever we have done for that this one and this one same thing need to interchange for vertical make this as 100 and this is 0 and this is 480 this is 0 okay same for horizontal this is 650 this is gonna be 0 this is 100 and this is 0 fine just I just interchanged go for ok go for ok go for run time now increase this yeah this box is moving towards a and this is moving towards c got it see both are meeting at this point fine so like this only we need to do the diagonal movement so shall we give the diagonal movement to this box yeah go to development page take some different uh, you know this conveyor let's take this incline the conveyor go for it so the conveyor is like this so the box need to move from this location to this location towards this side got it from this location to this location fine so let's take same box keep it over here click on this I'm not going to do anything with the conveyor just click on this so we need to give both okay so just measure it so here x is 1060 here x is 670 so let's make it as round so that it will be easy for calculation. So this is 1070. So let's take this 1000. Okay. Let it take this as 1000. Keep it over here. Measure that as 1000 to this location. This is almost 970. So what will be the difference? It's just 30, right? So let's make this to keep it over here and make this that is 50. Okay. So this is 1030 and this is no, now the value is changed. This is 1050. This is, let it be as 550 something, okay? So 1050, 550, it is 500, right? The difference is 500. Let's take it as 500 approximately. So to, let's see, uh, now x, uh, y, x is 500, okay? Now let's measure y. So 110, y is 110. So let's make y is round to 100. Now it is, let it be as 400. No, 400 will not come. Yeah, 400 is coming. So 100 to 400 difference is 300, right? So first let's give the horizontal. So horizontal, this is going to move towards this side, correct? So just give 500 here. It should be 
towards right side so the range should be opposite go for vertical for vertical it is not going upside it is go it is coming down only so it should be normal this is 0 this is 100 and uh, this is gonna 0 so we should be very careful right see uh, what is the difference we have seen 100 that was 400 so the difference was sum of 300 right yeah so see this is anyhow coming down only so it should be common but for horizontal it is towards right so i have interchanged don't confuse with this okay so one more time just measure the y so one more time this is 100 are you able to see right this is y okay just watch here if i keep a cursor what is the value over there now it is 100 keep it over here now it is 400 so the difference is 300 right so just check it out let's see whether it is working or not or what a mistake we have done let's see so now move this yeah it is moving can you see it is moving and place it over here fine so this is diagonal movement see it is moving fine depends upon the range it is moving okay so if you want to keep it here you need to change the x value I'll do it and do the x value. We'll change the x value and see. See for x I think we have given 500 right. x I have given 500. So just give 470. Go for run time. Yeah. That's it. Correct. Yeah. So this is how we need to do the diagonal. So just practice this. You can take any object. I have taken this inclined uh, conveyor. You can take anything and just practice. Okay. I will meet you in the next session with another interesting topic. Bye. Hello everyone. So in this session, we are going to see one more animation link. Let's see what is that. So in the previous session, we have seen this right, this location, horizontal, vertical, diagonal and all we have seen. Fine. So now I'll del delete these extra boxes. Now take only this box. Fine. So I want this box to move from A to B first, then B to C, then again C to A, right? So complete, it is starting from this place and again for complete one round, it again need to reach A. Can you get the point? So what I'm telling means whenever we are changing the slider from 0 to 100, this box need to move like this, A to B, B to C, C to A, okay? When a slider is 100, the box you need to be here. Fine, got it? So, how we can do this? So, first we can uh, split the slider, right? What kind of splitting means? For A to B, it may take 30. So, from 0 to 30, the box need to move A to B. Fine. So, from 30 to uh, 60, the box need to move from B to C. So, this is horizontal, this is vertical. Got it? So I'll just do that first. Take this box, take a horizontal, and uh, this is level. Tag this level and just give 0 to 30. Fine. So 0 to 30, and uh, this range you need to give. So let it be a 700 for now. Click OK. Then go for vertical. Now give here from 31 to 60. Because already 0 to 30 is occupied by horizontal movement. So after that it need to move from B to C. So you need to give the proper range of the slider here. 
so for this you are giving 300 okay let it be 300 okay so let's check it out this first yeah just increase the slider the box is moving yeah so the box is moved up to 30 right so after 30 it is started moving towards C so this is I think 60 yeah so up to 60 it is moved up to this place I think we need to increase that uh, Y range fine so imagine a box is over here then how can we can move the same box from C to A that is a question so I'll do this just increase this range vertical range 300 no increase that to 500 so just go online yeah increase it yeah i was a bit very fast no so yes so at 60 the box reached this place fine now again when from 60 to 100 the same box need to move from c to a okay so for that what we can do do we have any other option see already we are having only two options that two options are already utilized how can i make one more diagonal movement that is a question correct so for that in such cases we need to use one animation property which is called as visibility what is that it is visibility so by using visibility option we can able to do it how we are going to do it means you need to take a duplicate of this box just i'll take the duplicate and keep it in this place fine just keep this c to here you need to keep it here so what i'm going to do means this box will be taking care from a to c and this box will be taking care from c to a okay so just click on this box you need to move towards like this okay keep this box here click on this go for horizontal first so it will be from which one to which one it should be from 60 is already completed correct so this is from 61 to 100 since it is going towards this side towards left side you need to give the higher range here and how long you need to give here you need to measure it so approximately i'll just give uh, 700 so after that go to the vertical link in vertical link also you need to give top top is 100 and this is 60 okay and uh, here also i'm just giving the approximate value as 500 so just check so here it should be up should be 500 down should be 0 here also up should uh, left should be higher value and down should be 0 go for ok go for ok now see you can see able to see two boxes the first box is moving from A to B then B to C correct can you see the box is here and this box is moving from C to A. Fine. Right. So, but the problem here is in a runtime, we need to view only one box. Correct. But in runtime, there are two boxes. So, here you can use the visibility option. So, by using visibility option, you can able to hide one box in a runtime. In a development page, it should be a two box only because one is a duplicate. But in a runtime, you can do it. Fine. So, let's see how to do that. So, before that, I just want to increase this space bit. Because both the boxes need to be in exactly the same place. So, that... Uh, we should not see the transition between the boxes. Just see here. Box is coming. No. Where it is placing. That place exactly I need to keep. 
or if you want you can keep it here also fine if you want we need to measure that measure that place properly yeah fine go for it go for the vertical still more i'll just give 40 i'll give and i'll give this bit this side so that it move like this fine now click on this box go for visibility option here you can find in this miscellaneous okay go for visibility if you go for visibility it is asking for which parameter for which expression you want a visibility so you can have two options here one is visible status on and off so it is like hide and the visible okay see on means it should be visible so visible this parameter this box need to be visible for which expression i'm giving just select our level let's tap, double tap on select our uh, tag which is level level less than 60 yeah 61 so that it will stop by 60 okay so the object we are selecting no that should be visible below 61 that means up to 61 it, it should be up to 60 it will be visible okay so choose okay choose okay fine just go for run time and check see now it is visible no now increase the slider it is moving moving yeah can you see the second box the first box is not there see it is not there but previously it was there no before we have given the uh, you know that visibility parameter i mean feature right so that's what we have given see slider value is above 60 so that is gone hidden got it now this is visible and this is reaching the point a fine see there is a transmission no can you see but for 0 to 60 this box is visible this is also should not be there no because in runtime i should see only one box so i need to give visibility property to this box also okay so let's see let's do that click on the second box okay click on this go for visibility now what is the expression level greater than 60 so it will be start visible from 61 got it this box should be visible after 60 only so that box is visible only up to 60 so both will be set and if you go for the runtime you can see only one box now correct so it's like a magic so in the runtime you are doing this but in a development you only know how many objects you have kept over there see yeah so see it's like only one box is moving from a to a a b c and again a it's like like that only no so for this only we are using this visibility option see whenever you are supposed to give same animation but for the multiple times correct that's what we have used visibility see i need to give vertical i need to give horizontal again i need to give vertical so like that we have some cases so same vertical and horizontal is repeated in a multiple time fine that's what we are using the visibility option fine so this is how you need to do the visibility just go for the visibility and you need to write the expression fine so you need since our level is a slider you need to give the range like above 60 below 60 or equal to 60 whatever you can give okay and this is the hidden option you can choose this also suppose if i choose this if i choose visibility option off here then this should be like this i should change the sign just check it out now both are same see both are same but for that i have given less than here i have given greater than that's it okay so you can choose both you can choose but with the proper expression okay so just practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session 
with another interesting topic. Fine? Bye. Hello everyone. So in this session we are going to see the animation property which is called as object size. Okay. So we have seen colors, uh, fill, fill options, you know, blink options and all. Now it is a size. What is this size means? Whenever you are changing some analog range, it will be changing the size. That may be a height or that may be a width. Okay. Let's see how to do that. For that, I'm making this rectangle as a small one. Okay. Or let, let it just big one only. Okay. Keep like this. And now, for this slider, I have given level as a tag. Go for the object. Go for the object size over here. Can you see the object size here? Yes. So, in this, you are having two options. One is height. Another one is width. Got it? So first we'll go for height. Click on the height and it is asking for the expression. Okay. So click on the expression as level. And now this is, I think you have known this. This is a slider range and this is the how much uh, output it should be. Whether it is 100% or you can change. But it should be 100% means it will be completely doing its work. Fine. And there is an option called anchor. There are three options. One is top, middle and bottom. Okay. So in the road orientation, do you remember the orientation we have done before? So it is like where we are holding and rotating kind of no like that from where it should start the change in height. Okay. The object height is going to change from where whether it is from bottom or whether it is from top or whether it is from middle. Let's go with the default. Let's bottom is the default one. Let's go with the default. Go for okay. Go for OK. Now go for online. Can you see your object is not there? Because your slider is 0 now. Correct. Now increase the slider. Yes. Can you see this object is starting from bottom. Height, height is changing now. Okay. That's it. So for 100% it is showing its original height. If you reduce. It will be reducing and for 0 nothing is there. Okay. For 0 means there is no height kind of. Right. So increase it will be increasing decrease it will be decreasing. This is height and that is from bottom. Now change this to next to one middle. Okay. Change this to middle. Go for okay. Okay. Shall we take one more object so that we can see here. Uh, the top also in the one shot. Click on this. Go for top. So the that one I have given middle. This is top. Fine. Go for run time. Now both are zero. See. Yeah. This is starting from top. Okay. Now you can see the difference. That is doing from. See. This fellow is moving both sides because it, is, it was starting from middle. But this is starting from top. So it will go only down. Check out here. Yeah. This is going only down. This is going for both sides. Okay. Now if you decrease it is going on both sides. But this will be only towards top. See. I hope you are seeing that. This fellow is constant here. This is moving both sides. That's it. See. So that is that anchor. Where? From where it are? It is shrinking its height. That matters. Fine. So this is height. Okay. So what about that width? Let's see that also. I'll delete this. Go for it. Disable the height. Check in the width. Check in the width. And width is also having options. See. Left, center, right. So left is default i'll go with the default first select the tag okay go for okay okay 
contain. Now it is zero. Increase. Yeah. So width is happening now. See. It was height before. Now it is width. Fine. Like this. Okay. So this is starting from left. See left is constant now. It is moving towards right. If you are choosing some other options. Let's go with center. Okay. Go for okay. Go for okay. Go for run time. Now increase. Now it will be center. Both sides it will be moving. See it's like a screen which is moving towards right and left. Got it? Yeah, like this. Fine. Then we have one more option which is right. Let's choose that also. We'll see. Right I'm choosing. Now for right I'm just instead of uh, 100 I'm just giving 50. So it will be doing its output for only 50 percentage. It will not complete the 100 percentage. See it is starting from right. Yeah. See only half fellow is happened. The remaining half was not happened because I have not given the 100 percentage. It is taking exactly 50 percentage of work is done now. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Go for development. Got it guys. So you may have a confusion like where to use this. Correct. Where to use this. I'll show you. Oh, I deleted that. I'll yeah, keep it here. I'll show you where it may useful okay so i'll make this size to very like this fine keep it here take a line So imagine this particular object is moving from somewhere. Okay. It, the particular object is moving from somewhere and you are here. You are here watching that object which is uh, moving from far. Okay. So according to your uh, our right side, let it be R. So we are standing here and the object is moving from far. Okay. So when it was in a far it will be look so small right so whenever it is moving towards us slowly slowly the size will be changing fine i hope you are getting my point so it was here okay whenever it is moving far uh -huh, from far to move towards us that that time it will be looks bigger when it is in a far it was very small that is a concept okay so for this i'm going to give first this uh, vertical movement Okay, first I will give the vertical movement. Sorry, this one, vertical movement I will give. Level, how it is going to move means from top is 0 and from bottom it is 100. And how long distance you need to give? So, let it be as 540 or let it be, yeah, let it be 540, okay. So, vertical movement means it will be moving towards us. That's fine. Along with that, you are changing height or width. Let it be as height. Okay, height also you are doing. Let it be as middle. Now check it out. Now the object was not there. Okay, now the conveyor, let it be as this is a conveyor which is moving. Okay, and you are standing and watching over here. Yes, so the object is slowly, slowly becoming big. Right, so this is the concept. If you are giving both height and width, you can see it in a better way, I think. Give this also. Go for OK. Go for OK. Yeah. Right? So like this, you can see. You can change this oh only one was selected that time instead of uh, 
this one instead of zero you just start with one okay and this also you start with one oh this was 50 let make it as 100 from center and this is also from middle go for okay go for okay go for run time yeah can you see it better it was very small whenever it is moving towards us it is big so for this you need to give both the animation see if initially it was not selected that's what we couldn't able to see now you can see you know see like this you can make a animation so when it nearer to you it looks big when it is far it looks very small got it that's it this is the use of this uh, object size animation fine object size animation so what i'm what i have done i have combined this object size with location like in the in the previous sessions we have seen no percentage fill with the fill color that's it okay okay guys so let's practice this in the software i'll meet you in the next session with another interesting topic fine thank you bye Hello everyone, in this session we are going to see about one more property which is blink property in animation link. So generally what is this blink means you can able to make the object to blink in certain conditions. For example, see this lamp we have made to blink you now. So I, I hope you have remembered in our previous sessions we have enabled this blink option so that this will be blinking whenever SW1 is going on. Correct. So like that we can able to give the blinking option to this sensors or whatever objects we have taken from symbol factory. Okay. Let's see how to do that. So first I'm going to uh, take for this job in sensor. So what is the logic means? So let's take one uh, the switch out. Let's take this switch out. So whenever if I turn on the switch this need to blink. Okay, this is my simple program now. So I'll tell you how to do that. So let's see what is the tag. So the tag is SW1. Okay, the tag is SW1. So go for this object. Go for it. So you can see the animation links in that. In miscellaneous, you can find the blink option. Okay, so just click on that blink. And just in the expression, usually it will be like this. This is the default setup, okay? So in the expression, you need to choose for which parameter we need to make the object to blink, okay? For which parameter we have decided, which is that switch, right? SW1. So you can type here or just double tap and select from the list. I'm selecting, okay? So once you have done the selecting, see the attributes here. Here it is telling blink invisible and the next option is blink visible with these attributes so this is the default setup i'll just go with the default setup then i will tell you what is this blink invisible okay so see the blink speed also slow medium fast whatever you want you can choose uh, but default is the medium okay let's go for fast now go for okay go for okay right go for online now the switch is off so it is not blinking now turn it on yeah can you see your sensor is blinking while blinking it is taking a black color correct see it is taking a black color turn it off it stopped blinking is stopped okay go for development page what is that black color let's see go for this blink yeah can you see line color fill color so because of this only it was showing the black color just check it out here fill color i'll just change to 
what color we can give let's give this okay go for medium okay okay run time now check it out can you see the color is changed yeah okay so this is blinking fine so this is blink with one attribute what is that attribute this one blink visible what if if i choose blink invisible okay let's choose that let's choose this go for okay go for okay go for run time now check yeah can you see it is like going and coming invisible then visible visible like that fine so this is this attribute if you don't want this you want that color change means you can go for the second option that's your wish okay so this is blinking option fine so what i have given i have given here is the digital parameter fine like that you can go for analog parameter also what is this analog parameter means you can give this slider range also so now what i'm going to do means let's keep the switch back to this place yeah now what i'm going to do no this box is here okay what is the use of job in sensor means whenever the object is located nearer to the sensor it should give one i mean it should be blinking or it should be giving some sound or it should give one okay so for that i'm going to use this tag this level tag and i'm going to move this box horizontally okay the box is going to move horizontally so let's take when the slider is 0 to 10 imagine that time this box should be in this range okay so that time only this should blink so go for it go for blink instead of this sw1 go for the level 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 less than 10 okay that means what so whenever the level value is less than 10 that time only it will be blinking okay that mean what the box is nearby kind of right so let's i'll show you in the run time see the box is very nearer no it is in this zone so it is blinking now increase your slider yeah still it is there still it is there yeah it crossed it in slider is crossed it in so it is stopped blinking so it will be moving can you see that's it fine so this is the working of blinking para option in animation see again it is blinking because the box is nearby you can make this motor also to blink let's do that and also this is job in sensor no like that i'll have one more sensor here so the box is reached in this place again that sensor need to blink let's see that also so let's take a duplicate of this first keep it over here and just type the title as job out sensor fine yeah that's it right so i just want to increase the length because it is stopping in between so i'll just go for 500 now choose this and tell blink when because when a slider is moved up to this place means it should reach up to 95 to 100 no so you just give the level value should be above 95 or 90 whatever you can give just give right so go for it okay okay fine and this one this motor this motor also i want to give the blinking option whenever the slider is 1 to 100 so just choose this go for blink choose above 1 or above 0 So above zero means what is the box is moving, so the conveyor is running. Conveyor is running because of the motor. That time it is running like that. You can give fine. So go for it. Okay, okay. Go for run time. Let's see. See now our job in sensor is blinking, but motor is not blinking because slider value is zero. If you start increasing, it will be started blinking. Yeah, can you see? 
your motor is blinking yes yeah now job out sensor job in sensor is stopped blinking because it is out of range increase this yeah once it reached above 90 this fellow is blinking because the box is nearer to this fine so this is how you need to use the blinking animation property fine so just practice this in the software fine so you can choose whatever symbol factory you want right so you can choose uh, some containers some other containers or some other sensors even you can uh, uh, make some object you have taken from you can taken from this you can create the some object and further also you can give some blinking parameter whatever okay so just practice this in the software i'll meet you in the next session with another interesting topic fine yes see you bye hello everyone in this session we are going to see the orientation animation property let's see what is that so for that i'm going to take one rod kind of symbol for by using this rectangle i have taken this fine so just have one slider also and just copy our slider over here and uh, paste it in our window 3 yeah fine so this is the input i am going to give to this box i mean rod kind of symbol just click on this rod go for orientation in miscellaneous okay click it is asking us to select the parameter okay just select the parameter level because for the slider we have given level okay so that's it so these are all the default uh, you know setup can you see properties 0 to 100 0 to 360 this is uh, this is uh, center of rotation offset this is zero this is the default i am not going to change anything now just go with the default setup click okay click okay go for run time now increase this i mean increase the slider can you see the rod is taking the rotation it is 180 so for 50 it reached 180 degree and yes it is complete 360 degree happened okay so this is orientation so orientation means you can make some rotation by using this orientation property fine so if you reduce again it will back right okay so here you need to see one thing so it is like where it is see imagine you are rotating a big rod okay right so you are holding where you are holding imagine like that now according to this example it is holding at the center right can you see can you see it is like a center no someone is holding here and it is rotating kind of fine so it is taking the default for the default setup it is imagining that it is holding at center center point is at center so that it is catching over the it is rotating the object fine so if you are not want this center you want to hold here or here from here rotation means how it will rotate from here it will take the center point means how it will rotate and all we'll see okay fine so for the default setup we have seen correct so now i'm um, just keep it aside take this cross mark and keep it over here yeah fine just take one object draw here
make it bit small yes so the center i'm just keeping to place it center okay now for this rod i'm going to give the same orientation give the same level this is 3600 this is 360 fine now imagine for x position okay for x position i'm just giving 30 instead of 0 i'm just giving 30 let's see okay i'm just giving 30 go for run time now check out this fellow where it is happening where it is holding can you guess that it is like this position no okay it is like this position yeah it was not center correct it was not center that is the difference i'll let it this one that we have seen right so now i'll make this to zero again now you see the changes yeah can you see it's holding like center correct that is the difference if i give 30 it is taking this side if i give minus 30 what it will do shall we check that yes we'll check it out instead of 0 i'm just giving minus 50 let's give minus 50 you can give minus 30 also no issues minus 50 means you can see up to this let's check it out yes can you see the holding place is different now right yeah so like this you can change the x and y position so instead of x let's make this to zero alone instead of zero in a y position let's give 80 plus 80 i am giving so let's take plus 80 i have given check it out yeah can you see the difference for plus 80 it is going like here okay so in underwear in touch the y position is taking plus value in this side it's not like our normal graph in normal graph this is plus y and this is minus y but in in touch this is plus side this is minus side okay so i'll do one thing yeah i'll keep the box like this so that you can see that uh, holding of y in a down so i have given yes it is also changing see we rotated no so it is changed so i'm just giving 80 check it out can you see for 80 it is holding here okay yes got it if i give minus 80 it will hold this side go to development click on this click on this in give minus 80 yes see it is holding here fine so x and y position is zero means it will be holding at center else it will be different okay and you can change this back to 0 and instead of 360 you can give 180 also okay if you give 180 what will happen instead of the complete rotation it will take the half rotation let's see that see for complete 0 to 100 it is taking just that 180 only okay that's it it is taking 180 only see see this place okay this place will reach up to here only that's what i am telling it is 180 see that's it it is 180 fine so this is orientation just practice this in a software fine so i'll meet you in the next session with another animation property in in touch yes bye
Hello everyone. So in this session we are going to see the disable animation property. What is this disable means? You can check it out here. You can see the disable here now. So what generally it will do means if we are enabling this property it will make the object not to do its function. Okay, so it is like not like visibility. Don't confuse this with visibility. Visibility is like making the object to, you know, visible or invisible. Okay, but disable is stopping the, stopping the object from functioning. Okay, simply we can tell stop the object from functioning. So let's see uh, how to do that. Okay, so suppose if you are making this to stop functioning, what you can do, or better I'll, instead of the sensor, I'll take this switch, okay. So when it goes to runtime, what will happen? If I press this, it will take me to the next page. If I press this, it will take me to this, this page. Fine. This is common. For example, I don't want this W3 or W2 to do function in runtime. Can you get the point what I'm telling? So in the runtime, this W2 and W3 should not be in a working condition. See, if I click, it should not move to the page navigation should not happen. Okay, like that I want. So what I can do means I'll take this switch here. So this is switch one, right? This is switch one. Click on this. Go for disable. Okay, go for disable. Click on this and here in the expression you can select what tag you want okay so it will be uh, it is a default look okay so just click on and select the tag for which tag you want to make this disable function choose the tag and you are having two options here one is disabled state on and off when this is on disable is on kind of okay so i'll just go with on first this is sw1 and i'm choosing on so let's see what will happen. Yeah. So now W2 is working. See, if I press, it will take me to the W2 page. If I press this, it will take me to this. This is common. Suppose if it is on. See, if, if it is on, can you see? W2 is disabled. It is stopped from functioning. Got it? So this is like disabling the object. Okay. So if you click on this, it will work. This is common. Okay. But if you release this again, it will come back to its original state. You can make use of it. Fine. So this is the disable option. Suppose if you are giving the disable property to sensor, let's see what will happen. Yeah. I'm giving disable and I'm giving like this SW1. Okay. And just... Uh, remove this blink property okay so don't confuse with multiple properties i'm just giving disable only go for runtime it is there if we turn on it is still there okay so it is not having any influence with these parameters okay so you can make use of this disable property where you are giving some input See, through, through this button, I'm giving some input, no. So, that's what we can able to make use of this disable properties to input parameters. Okay, with the sensor, nothing will be happening. See, I'll show you. See, take this blink option also for the sensor, okay. So, just go for runtime. It is stopped. See, I, I need to set this first. I'll set that first. So, click on this, blink, yeah, this is fine, okay, go for runtime. Why it is not blinking? I think it is not selected properly. Yes, it is selected only, level should be above zero. Yes. yeah see it is blinking now okay if i turn on can you see it is stopped blinking no right it is remains it is blinking 
fine that's what i am telling so for these proper for these objects and all you cannot make use of this disable property but see here this fellow is disabled because it, you are giving some input okay so we can do that and suppose for uh, you may ask me whether we can give uh, uh, disable property to this switch or this slider because for slider we are giving the input and switch also we are giving the input no uh, can we able to give means yes we can able to give i'll show you how to do that so for this slider whenever the switch is on the slider should not work that is disable correct i'm stopping the slider from functioning so i need to go to the uh, animation link of the slider but it is not coming correct so for this also you need to break it go to break cell okay now once it is break if you click on the slider this one it will take you to the animation page now use the disable and go for switch okay right now go for runtime now you can make use of the slider like this that is fine now for example if it is on can you see i am dragging this but this is not happening because this is disabled see i am dragging it's not happening if you turn off and drag it is happening see can you see that uh, box is coming yeah it is happening if i turn on this is disabled same thing this is also disabled i couldn't able to move this slider it is stopped functioning okay so this is disable function got it so just practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session right so we are having the next uh, yes this tool tip let's see what is that in the next session fine yes bye Hello everyone. So in this session, we are going to see the tooltip animation link. So what is this tooltip animation link? Let's see what is that. So just click on the sensor or any object, whatever you want. So you can see the tooltip option here. In the miscellaneous, you can see the tooltip. Correct. So just click on that. Fine. So here it is having tooltip attributes as expression and static text okay so now for uh, in this session i'm going to take the static text what is this static text means uh, generally what is this means you just give some constant uh, text over here so what is this tooltip means whenever you are keeping a cursor nearer that object it will give some details about it okay it is just giving some information about that object for example Mm, I'll just type job in sensor. Okay. I'll just type this and click OK. Click OK. Delete this one. Above we have written. No. Delete that. Delete that. Now click on this. Go to tooltip. In that you just type job out sensor. And don't confuse how come when I'm clicking this it is stating the static text already. Okay. Because in, in touch it is like uh, whenever you are using that for the previous time it is taking for the next time also. So it will be very useful for your editing. Okay. This is job out sensor. And just click on this object. Go for tool tip. See. Last time we have updated here. No. That is here. So you just give this is some object. This is some object. Okay. Go for it. And uh, just click on this button. In a tool tip, you just give this is go to button, okay, and uh, this you just click on this lamp or oh, for lamp and all it will not come. You need to break it, okay. How to break it means you need to break the cell completely. If you click on it, it will come. Now give the tool tip as this is lamp. Okay, like that you can give some information about it. So when you can able to see, I'm keeping a cursor here, it is not giving anything. 
it will give when it goes to runtime. I will show you. See. Can you see? When I keep the cursor nearby, it is giving job in sensor. This is object. This is job out sensor. Go to button. Lamp. Can you see? So, this is tool tip. So, it will be like, you know, giving some information. Even though we are not giving any label, if you go here, it will be telling. Right? So, this is the tool tip. So, this will be useful when you want to customize your page more. Fine? So, just practice this in the next software. I will meet you in the next session. Fine? Yeah. Bye. Hello everyone, so in this session we are going to see about fill option, okay. So let's see what is that. So for that I am going to get this rectangle and I am going to place it over here, fine. So for giving the input I am going to have this slider. So just click on this rectangle, it will take you to the animation page, right. So yes, can you see here percent fill. There is an option called percent fill in the animation. So just we will see the vertical first. What does this fill means? It will be fill with some color. Okay. So whenever you are changing the slider from 0 to 100, it will be filling the uh, you know object. So here I have taken the rectangle. No? So it will be started filling. So I will just take this vertical option. So if you click on that vertical option, it will take you to the you know this uh, dialog box in this box you need to give the expression fine so just take the expression of this slider so for slider i have given the tag name called level so i'm going to choose the same tag name okay and this side in the property this side you can see val value at minimum fill 0 this is 100 this is the default settings okay this is the default settings. I am not going to change anything. Fine. I just tag the level. Just go for OK. Go for OK. Now go for runtime. Yeah. So just increase this slider. Yeah. Can you see? Your tank color is changing. Whenever you are increasing, this is also changing. Fine. So, if you come down, it will again go. Got it? So, this is the default settings. Right? So, apart from that, what are the remaining settings we are having? So, just go for the vertical. Instead of up, just give down. Okay? So, default setting was up. Now, I am just giving down. Now, go for OK. OK. Go for runtime. Just increase this. Yes. Can you see? It's like this. It is towards down. It is coming towards down. If Since we have chosen the down option. It is like emptying the tank. Correct? See, imagine the tank is full now. If you increase this, the tank is empty. It is going down. Right? So, this is vertical filling. Okay? So, you have few more options here. One is this maximum and minimum fill. So, the default one is 100. So, what is that 100 means? Since it is a 100, it will be completely filling the tank. Okay. So, now take this to 50. Now, check what it is actually doing. Go for runtime. Now, just increase this to 0 to 100. It is filling up to 50 percentage only. Okay. So, how much we need to fill, whether it is a 100 percentage or 50 percentage like that. So, default will be 100. So, if you want to change that, you can change. Right. So, and there is a background color. You can see the background color is black. So, if you choose something different, 
when you go for the online you can see that updated color yeah it is yellow color now can you see it is fine so this is vertical filling vertical filling like that we are having horizontal fill also so just uncheck the vertical go for horizontal go for the settings so here also you are tagging the same tag let's go for the default settings default setting is right so right means it will take the right side this side this this is right side okay so just go for run time horizontal can you see it is moving towards right side okay yeah so this is horizontal so vertical means it was taking y axis since it is a horizontal it is taking x side x axis fine so here also you can change the direction that to this side left side you can change direction to left if you have changed this to left go for okay okay go for run time yeah now it will be towards left side see it is towards left side got it so this is how you need to do the percentage fill here also instead of 100 if you are setting this to 25 let's see what will happen let's check out this go for run time just increase this you can see it is up to 25 okay so yes so like this you can customize this animation property according to the requirement of yours fine so just practice this in the software i will meet you in the next session with another interesting topic bye Hello everyone, in this session we are going to see about fill color, right? So what is this fill color? In the previous session we have seen this, right? Percentage fill. So whenever I am going for the percentage fill, there is a only one option like background color is black or whatever color you are choosing here, okay? So it will be in the beginning, whenever you are increasing or decreasing the slider, this black color will be uh, you know completely reducing and it will be showing the original color of the object correct that is fine so what is this fill color so if you want to give some specific color to the object whenever you are filling or whatever it is you can make use of this fill color okay so just click on the object for which one you want to give this fill color it will be changing the color of the object okay so just go for this and you are having discrete and analog here. Go for discrete. Choose the tag which one you want to give. Okay. So you are having two options. One is discrete expression. Another one is this analog. Just see. Discrete fill color. Analog fill color. Discrete fill color means for the particular object. If you are giving digital parameter uh, means that is discrete. Or uh, if you are giving some analog parameters like slider or something means that will be analog got it so just go for discrete choose the tag i'm going to choose sw1 fine and for true what color for, for false what color that is the one so just go for red or oh, just go for green for on just go for red for zero this one is exactly similar to the appearance we have seen the appearance we have seen no, initially the, for this one. See, this one we have seen a fill color. Same thing. Same thing we are having in animation property. That's it. Nothing different. It's, uh, it's exactly same. See, if I go online, it's in red color now because switch is zero. Change the switch. It changed the color. Fine. It is exactly similar to this one. See. If you turn off, it is changing to 
red color fine so if you do yeah same thing you are having in this place see like this fine so this is discrete then what will be the analog okay let's see that so for analog i'm going to take this level as a slide slider as a level okay go for it disable this discrete go for analog okay click on that once you click it will take you to the dialog box so here it is having an analog expression analog expression is nothing but our analog tag so choose this level and break points it is asking what is this break point means in interge it is giving some options like whenever you are changing the slider from 0 to 100 it is having various range right 0 to 100 100 to 20 like that you are split you can split the range for each and every range you can give some specific colors okay for example see here from 0 to 10 i want some color you can give uh, starting it will be red so from 10 to 20 it will be green you can change like that see multiple colors you can change but the order you are going to give towards right side no that should be in an increasing order it should not be decreasing and there is no you know equal uh, uh, you know difference need to be there not like that it should be increasing order see i have given 30 then i have given to 50 now i can go for 80 like that you can give okay that should be within our slider range now i am giving some different color for this 20 for 30 i am also giving different color like that you can choose according to the requirement okay while going online you can get to know better okay just wait on yeah choose something here let it be green again okay 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 there are multiple locates here fine go for runtime now it is in red color because i have given for zero it is red fine so increase this you can change the color yeah it is green see it is again changed when it crossed 20 when it is nearer to 20 not crossed 20 okay now we are crossing 20 see ah for 30 it is changed color yeah yes again yeah changing now yes got it so it will not take the last one for the last one i think we have given green color but it is changing that 90 to 100 okay so the last color is for above 100 now our slider range is 100 only you know so it is maintaining the 90 to 100 that pink color fine that last green color it is not taking because we are not crossing the 100 so this is fill color option can you see okay like this it will be got it so it is changing color for the complete object see for the you know it is like the object is this much size it is changing completely 100 percentage it is changing so with this we can do one thing i'll show you what if if we are merging this percentage fill with fill color okay so let's see for vertical i'm just giving level okay for level i'm just giving like this let it be as 100 here okay direction is down background color is this one i have given so initially it will be in the yellow color so what i'll do i'll just put it as white go for okay so now what i'm, I'm going to do i'm just percentage fill with the fill color i'm giving okay so without percentage fill it was completely filling the object now if you are giving percentage fill also let's see what is happening it is in white color initially increase the slider yeah so it is coming from up to down now it is green color no now it is again changing color can you see the changes in color for the particular it's not changing for complete okay for the complete object it is not changing it is depends upon the percentage fill percentage fill also we have given no like that yes like this fine 
we'll do one thing we'll change the direction we'll change the direction to up okay up and uh, go for okay go for okay and just take symbol factory go for yeah go for pipe option it's loading wait pipe where is pipe yeah here it is just take hmm take this keep it here we just keep it here it's like something is filling this tank imagine there is a tank and something is filling you can extend the pipe also okay so it is like filling the tank just go on line now check it is like the tank is filling got it so like that you can make use of your fill percentage and percentage color depends upon the requirement you can change the colors also if you are giving the same color it will looks good no see i have given some different colors so if you are giving the same color it will be looks like one particular liquid is filling in the tank through this pipe so like this only they are making the animations okay so whenever you are combining uh, two or more uh, animation link in the same application you can build some good projects fine see i have merged percentage fill and fill color got it same thing you can go for horizontal also just practice this in the software i'll meet you in the next session with this line color what is this line color and all we'll see in the next session fine yes bye hello everyone in this session we are going to see the animation property which is fill line okay so in the previous session we have seen that fill color and all right so let's see what is this uh, fill line okay so let's take one switch we can do with slider also but i am taking switch also okay keep it over here and uh, name this as sw1 because already we have created this sw1 fine so go for it now i'm going to change the line for line color for this particular uh, you know object fine so click on this go for line color can you see the line color here yes this line color go for discrete go for discrete now give the tag name for which tag name you want to change the color okay so i'm giving this uh, slider i mean what is not slider or switch so go for the sw1 switch fine so when it is true what color you want so let's make that as fluorescent green and when it is zero i want this to be red just give like this okay go for okay go for okay fine now go for online yeah can you see the line color is changed to red color got it if you turn on it changed to blue i mean sorry green color so this is come only line it's not about fill color and all it's only line fine see that's it why it is in a black color means because already we have given some properties this property we have seen no that's what it is like this fine so if you want to enable the border of the project i mean border of the object means you can go for this option right if you turn on it will be in this color if you turn on turn off it will be in the color you have given fine so go for the development page and uh, click on this 
just go for discrete this is discrete right the discrete means it's you need to give the digital tag instead of that just disable that go for analog go for analog now here you can change for the analog tags shall we take the level tag for the slider we have given the level right take this and see it is not similar to uh, the discrete right see for discrete just a minute oh two we need to update this okay for the discrete whatever we have given see for the discrete what we have given just to one and zero was there so it is easy to give right so for analog for analog you need to give multiple ranges it's not only stopping with a zero and one it is having multiple options so check on analog now give the tag value now update here so for zero what is the color okay so what i'm going to give means see our slider is having the range of 0 to 100 so i'm giving 0 to 10 just give 10 here and some update some colors so i'll just update the numbers first then i'll select the color 30 40 this should be in the increasing order okay this should be in the increasing order you cannot give the lower number towards right side fine so i'm giving some color like uh, we'll go for red first then when it is 10 it is green when it is 20 it should be some different color so that you can see no so that's what i'm giving some different colors okay you can give same color also no issues And go for again fluorescent okay go for okay go for okay go for online now now it is in a red color fine increase this yeah can you see color is changing of the border of the object yes yes can you see still it is changing i have given one more uh, animation no so it is started moving so I'll do one thing. I'll disable that property. Percentage fill. I'm just disabling. Go for OK. Make this too small so that you can see better. Yeah. See, it is in red color now. Increase green color. Whatever color we have given for the range, it will be like that. See, it is changing. Yeah. See, and at last it will be green. This is the color I have given. That's it. Okay. So, it is changing the outline. You cannot expect inside. That is fill color. This is just a line color. The object border you can name it as object border fine so like that you can give to some other objects also let's see for which one we can give yeah same thing for this and all you can go for this fill color options or line color option whatever object you can take on from uh, you know symbol factory you can give for that let me try for this Go for discrete, this one. Go for OK. Go for OK. Go for runtime. So for 0, it is in red color. Correct. This is SW1. If you turn on, it is changed to green color. So for simple factory objects also, you can give. Got it? Fine. Yeah. Go for the development page. Let's try for analog also. Disable this. Enable this analog same it is already updated no so no need of changing anything go for runtime it's initially in red color if you increase it is changing the color just check out the border color okay check out the border color yeah can you see the border color is changing yes sir so now it is blue color border that's it okay so this is line color
line color we have seen discrete and analog fine so just practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session with another interesting topic bye Hello everyone. So in this session we are going to see about text color. Fine. So for example you are taking a text and keep it in here like switch status. You are writing like this. Okay. So if you want to expand this I mean yeah you can expand like this and the default color is black. If you want to change you can change here. Fine. Right. So, what is this text color means? Just click on the text and can you see the text color here? And it is having discrete, analog, discrete alarm, analog alarm and all. Okay. So, this go for discrete and analog now in this session. So, go for discrete and it is asking an expression. So, what exactly it is going to do is whenever the expression is going through whatever you are returning writing in the you know expression is going through it will be reflected in your text okay for example go for discrete and choose the expression as your switch okay so whenever the switch is on what color you want what exactly the switch that uh, you know the text color should be and whenever it is false what color exactly it is by using text see whenever we have taken the lamp or whenever we are taking the you know tools like a round and all we will be giving the you know color like a, for zero this color for one this color like that we have given all the same thing for text nothing big okay go for okay go for okay and go for runtime now see the text color is red color why because which is zero now if you change the text color is changing to green color or oh, is so fluorescent so if you want you can change the color right so this is text color and uh, how about the analog okay let it be how about the analog so now we have given the discrete the same thing you can go for analog when you go for the analog just choose the expression i'm going to choose our slider and it is exactly same as uh, this you know this fill color and all right so it is asking the range you can give the range and you can give the corresponding values for example see some this color you just choose the color first later we will give the uh, you know values just give some random color You can make this, you know, text color variation, uh, you know, by choosing this, you can able to, uh, you know, enable like uh, green means it is good in a good condition. Red means it is in uh, dangerous state like that. You can choose. Okay. So I'll just give 10, 20, 30. I hope you remember this order should be, you know, in a you know, higher higher number should be towards right side ninety and this is gonna be your hundred right go for okay go for okay and go for runtime now it is in red color because I have given zero to ten is red now change this yeah can you see the color is changing yeah so according to the range it is changing its color and default in the last it is purple color fine so this is text color guys so this is also one of the animation link so just practice this in the software i'll meet you in the next session with another topic fine yeah bye
Hello everyone. So in this session we are going to see about touch link. Okay. So I have cleared a few things in my screen. That's what it was not looking the same as our previous screen. I mean in the previous session. Fine. So let's see that. So just click on this. You can see. Yeah. Not this one. I'll take one object from tool. Yeah. Check on this. Can you able to see the touch links here? So user input, sliders, touch push buttons. All these are comes under our touch screen. Okay. So we'll see one by one. So for that, I'm going to take one button. Fine. I'll take this button. And uh, just take this user input. Okay. So touch link is having user input category. So this is having discrete, analog and string. There are three parameters over here. Fine. So let's see what is this discrete first. So check on that. When you click on that, it is asking for the tag. Okay. So I'm going to choose the tag name. Double tap on this. Yeah, it's loading. It will take you to the tag dictionary, tag name dictionary. You choose the tag name from that. Fine. And also we are having uh, option called key equivalent, message to user, uh, sunset prompt. Like that it is having something. Okay. So what is this actually touch link means? It is not like if you, if I press the button, it will not, uh, it will not turn on the output. Okay. See, I'm choosing this SW1. Fine. So just go with this. I'm not going to change anything over here. Just go with this SW1. Okay. Fine. I have chosen the discrete and I have given SW1. Click OK. Click OK. So to see this output, I'm going to have this. This as a light. Okay. This is the light I have taken from wizard. This is also having SW1 category. Fine. So if you want to change the text of this button, just right click, substitute strings. So you just give here on off button kind of. Okay. Just give. Okay. Fine. So it is updated here. Just go online. Just go for runtime. So touch link means it will not exactly work as a, a normal button. Okay. See, if I press, it will give me the extra window. Okay, this is touch link. So it is having both the options. See, if I am taking the normal button, what it will do? It will turn on if I press. And again, if I press, it will toggle to off condition. Correct. So it is having the toggle operation. But these kind of touch link will take you to the separate dialog box where it is having two options. So the blue color highlighter, no, this is the current position. Currently, the switch is in off condition. Now, if you press this, it is on. Okay. See for this the color is changed. We need to change the color of this light. It was mentioned as for one it is red color. That's what it is in red color. If you again press it will take you to the window again. You need to off. So this is touch link. On. And this is going to be off. Like this. Fine. So I will make to off. Go for development. And just check out the color of this. See, for true it is mentioned as red color. I'll just change because we used it to like uh, for one it is green color, for zero it is red color. Let it be fine. So that is for discrete. Fine. And also we are having what we are having. Discrete is only for digital. Correct. Also we are having for analog also. Correct. So before getting into that, just go back to the discrete and just check out here. There is some key equivalent option is there. What is this key equivalent means? I'll tell you when you, when you go for the runtime, you need to press the switch so that it will take you to the dialog box. Correct. When you, when you press that button, then only the dialog box was open. I'll show you. See, you are pressing, then only the dialog box come. Correct. So instead of this option, they are giving the key equivalent option. 
What is a key equivalent option means? You can choose any key here. For example, say I am choosing one, number one, number one in the keyboard. If I press that, automatically that box will open. Okay. And I will show you. Go for run time and check. See, I am my cursor is here. See, my cursor is here. I am pressing one. Can you see? The box hot got open. Now you can turn on. Again, if you want, you just keep the cursor somewhere, press 1, it will again open the dialog box. So, it is like another shortcut method to open the dialog box. Fine. And uh, we are having one more feature over there, which is this message to user. You can uh, type some message. This message you are going to write here will be displayed in the dialog box. I will just type welcome. Oh, no, not. Okay, let it be as welcome. Go for OK. Go for OK. Go for run time. And uh, press 1. Can you see? Your message is here. Got it? That's it. Fine. So, this is discrete. Next, we'll see the analog. So, for analog, I'm going to get help from slider. Just take a slider. Take it. And keep it over here. Fine. Just take one tank. Go for symbol factory. Okay. In this version I am not having a symbol factory. Uh, so while installation we need to do that. Fine. So I am going to have. A, okay. I will just take one rectangle as a you know tank. Fine. Now, create a tag for this. I am just giving this a slider. Define it. Memory real. Okay. Save it. Close it. So, this is a slider. And for this also, I am just giving the vertical fill. A slider. This is a new project. Okay. Fine. And now, what is this analog touch link? So, we have seen this digital, right? For analog, we need to give to the slider. But when you click on the slider, it is not opening the animation link. For that, you need to break the slider first. Break it. Once you have done the break cell, click on the slider page. This one, this, this slider, this place. It will take you to the animation link page. Fine. So go for analog. Go for analog. Click on that. And choose the same slider here. Right. So remaining and all I am going to go with the default. I am not changing anything. Okay. I just given the tag name. Go for ok. Go for ok. Go for run time now. Just hold on. Yeah. Go for run time. Just click on this fellow. Can you see one small dialog box open? This is analog touch. You can give the value here. Just give 70. So according to that, your tank is filling. Just give some other value. Give 100. Yeah, it is filling. When you click on that particular object, see for this button we have given the discrete. When I click on this, it will take me to the dialog box like that. For which part you have given the animation link, that one you need to press. Just give 67. It is there. Fine. So this is analog animation link. Okay. I mean analog, analog touch link. Fine. So we will see one more thing. I will make this to zero first. Yeah. Go for development. Right. Now what I am going to do means. Click on the same place. And it is having various options. No. This is also having key equivalent. Just give the key equivalent as. For the previous discrete we have given one right. Now give two. I have given two. And it is asking message to user. Okay. I will just type. Enter the value I'm just typing like this and it is asking whether you want a keypad 
just give yes yes i want a keypad so it will give you the keypad you can type right and this is the minimum and maximum value of the slider got it and the shortcut i have given is two let's see okay okay go for run time click on this it will take you to the keypad or you can click on this or what is the shortcut we are having two if you press two this will come if you press one discrete will come got it so i'm pressing two so just give the new value 78 it is filled 78 is filled if you want to see some color what you need to give you need to give percentage fill color also you need to give here right got it guys yeah so this is analog touch link go for development so discrete we have seen analog we have seen what what one more thing is less which is string see here discrete analog is done next one is string so for that what i'm going to do means let's take text to display okay text to display message tag display just keep it over here right so this is some message you are going to give fine click on this create a tag for this string tag i'm creating a tag name a string tag and this is a new tag so i'm defining just see the data type this is a memory message save it close it fine so now let it be this is a message you have created the tag now what you can do no you just take this text keep it over here and just type hash 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 if you click it will take you to the touch link page so click on string choose string and choose the tag you have created now string tag and for this you can give the runtime message okay so for that i'm creating a you know shortcut is three and if you want keypad give yes okay go for okay go for okay go for runtime so there is no message over here right so just press three it will take you to the keypad page so you can type here as in touch whatever you want message online you know in a runtime if you want to change something you can go for it yeah so it came here okay there it is not a constant message okay that's what it was not initially came when we when we wait for the you know for the runtime when we came it was nothing over there fine when you press the keypad and when you are updating it will be updating the new new text right so touch link is generally will take you to the another window you can type over there fine so this is touch link user inputs we have seen user inputs discrete analog and string in this session in the next session we are going to see what is this sliders what exactly it is going to do we'll see in the next session okay just practice this in the software guys i'll meet you in the next session fine yeah thank you hello everyone so in this session we are going to see about the touch link in that we are going to see the sliders so to study that i'm going to take one object from this tool and just keep it over here fine and uh, just click on this 
already we have seen this touch link user inputs right just uncheck that now we are going to see this sliders fine so what exactly this sliders will do i'll tell you so this is the slider fine so whenever i am changing this it will be changing the value of the tank this imagine this is a tank which i'll keep it over here and what i'm going to do means i'm going to give this analog fill color also already we have given vertical fill we'll give this also i'm just giving the break points here our slider range is 0 to 100 right so let's give some range here it should be the increasing order okay this and all we have already seen it should be increasing order and choose our slider and i'm just giving some colors that would be as blue give blue for all that's it okay right so this is also slider right so for the complete uh, you know for this complete object i have given the slider or else i'll do one thing this one we have broke for the previous session see all the objects are separate separate fine see everything is separate so let's take one more new slider keep it here and for this give the value as slider fine so now this is also slider and this is also slider correct so whenever i am changing the value from 0 to 100 this value this tank level will be changing correct this one we have seen already fine this one we have known already whenever i am changing the value from 0 to 100 the tank level will be changing this is fine but in some cases if you couldn't able to change this if you couldn't able to change the slider in online wait i'll show in the runtime see this is zero no if you are changing this value the tank level is also changing correct see it is changing in this runtime suppose you couldn't you are not supposed to change this one you are not supposed to change this one but you want to increase the tank level means you should have some other options also fine and that option is this slider i'll tell you just click on this object okay make this to yeah keep it here click on this object go for sliders it is having two options one is vertical another one is horizontal so first go for vertical get in, inside that it is asking a tag name go for same tag name and this is the range okay slider range fine and now just check it out it is having some reference location what is this reference location means from where it should move so i am going with the default default is bottom let's go with default go for runtime so if this will be act as a slider if you move this down can you see the tank level is increasing so it is like the another option to change the slider okay since we have given the reference location as down i mean bottom whenever you are moving the object to downside it is increasing if you increase up it will decrease you cannot move upside towards this because reference location is towards bottom now if you change the reference location to top you need to increase upside just wait select that I think it was not selected properly go back vertical yeah 
so it it was mentioned a stop only but that was not happened correct so one thing i have not done what is that mean see it was a bottom setup correct initially it was bottom and the values were like this whenever you are going for the top location you need to change top is 100 and this is 0 you need to change this okay whenever you are changing the reference location you need to change this also make it as 0 go for okay go for okay now go for run time it will be changing okay right so this is vertical slider like that you can make horizontal slider also disable this go for horizontal and select the tab so make it is left left means 0 0 starting at left right means 100 okay if you are changing this to right you need to change this interchange this you need to move towards right side you cannot move up or down you should move right or left so this is act as a vertical uh, sorry horizontal slider fine and apart from the reference location right left top and bottom we are having one more right what is that which is center okay so center means according to that you need to change the value whether you are moving towards right or moving towards left what exactly you want to do that settings you need to do so now check it out it will be works like this okay so how you are giving from right to left you want or left to right you want according to that the center location will be happening same thing for vertical also vertical is having middle also here also according to the range you are giving it will be moving from the middle right so this slider animation link is the alternate option for the slider movement you can make any object you can take from symbol factory uh, object also you can take and you can make use of it fine right so just practice this in the software guys so in the next session we'll see about this touch push button already we have seen this show window the remaining three we'll see in the next session fine yeah i'll meet you in the next session bye hello everyone so in animation link uh, we have missed one thing so in the previous session i have told that we have done with everything right but we have this right value display okay let's see that what is this value display for example see this is a slider so far we were increasing and decreasing we were seeing the values fine but if you want to display that value in some place for example take this tank i want to display the level of the tank in some place i can make use of this value display so for that get a text okay get a text here and just type hash 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 fine so once you have taken the text and you have typed the hash 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 click on that go for value display in that value display go for analog and choose which tag you want to showcase i want to show this level okay so i'm choosing that level go for okay go for okay got it guys same thing you can take one uh, switch take a switch and place it here and for this switch you have given the tag of sw1 if you want to show whether it is 1 or 0 in some place you can choose this keep it here and just type hash 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 and uh, go for discrete and choose the tag sw1 okay and uh, whenever you want to give what on message off message if you want to give you can type here fine so for on message you just type on for off message you just type off go for okay go for okay go for run time now 
now can you see the level is zero and the switch and the switch is off got it if you turn on it will change to on if you increase this can you see 78 here just increase to 100 it is also changing fine so this is value display if you off it will off fine guys so this is value display and we have one more option for string right string is also there so for that let's take one value displays and take a or yeah text display take message tag display and keep it over here just type some message okay in touch go for memory message let it be as in touch fine i'm just creating a new tag for this okay and uh, this one we have seen before right like same thing only just give one let it be yes okay and take the same text keep it over here hash 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 if you want to display that click on that go for string go for the same tag whatever you have created for that that's it go for okay one time what shortcut we have given for that key equivalent that one we need to see first click on this yeah i have given one i think one we have already used right so go for eight okay so there is no keypad for this so what i'm going to do means Previously, we have used uh, one technique, right? So, just take something and just type something here. And for this, I have given the string. And uh, this is 3, correct? String input and the shortcut is 3. Keypad is also there. Fine. Just go for runtime. Press on this. Just type something. It is here. But the string display we have given is not having the same tag name see for this i have used string input and for this i have used some different tag name in touch so just change that to string input yeah that's it it is just displaying okay don't confuse it is not doing anything else see whatever you are doing here that will be displayed here that's it fine so this is analog display this is digital display see according to that it will be changing its value and same thing here whatever you are typing it is also having a keypad whatever you are typing that will be displayed here in multiple places if you want to have a display of what is in that string or the display of what is the status of the discrete value or analog value whatever it is you can make use of this value display okay value display and for this you can make use of this text and put some hash 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 from that you can tag it whatever you want got it guys this is value display fine right so yeah so you can practice this in the software i'll meet you in the next session with another interesting topic fine Thank you. Hello everyone. So in this session we are going to see about trend. So trend is one of the application of SCADA. Okay. So generally what is trend means it is a graphical representation of your process variables fine 
so let's take a process variables so i'm going to take help from a slider let's take a slider here and this slider gonna be our one of the parameter i'm going to tag level yeah level 2 fine and this let it be as yes, level process variable and it is having the range of 0 to 100 fine this is the level of the tank if you want you can take a symbol factory tank also take a tank keep it over here yeah fine and uh, take a value display so that you can able to check what is the uh, you know level exactly click on that discrete um, value display level that's fine and for this also just break it and uh, give the vertical fill as level i think level one i have taken yeah new tag take level 2 tag it ok and here also change the tag name level 2 fine go for ok go for ok now I am going to watch this level in the trend window what is trend I have told you know graphical representation of the process variable it will be like a, in a graphical manner you can see some curves or some bar like that you can able to see for that you can have windows here this is historical trend and this is real time trend so just take a real time trend real time trend means you can able to watch what is happening current currently okay so this is the his, you know real time trend window just take this and keep it over here click on the window and it is having real time trend configuration real time trend configuration and here you have the option to choose the process variable what are the process variables you want to watch everything you can watch it you can tag here so pen pen means it is a process variable in SCADA so just tap select that and select the tag which one you want to monitor and what is the color you want see I have told you it is like a graph no so that graph is in which color that one if you want you can choose the color and width of the line I have given 5 here so you can see in a better uh, you know view and the colors of the uh, deviation if you want you can choose I am going to make it as a black let this as black ok and the chart color if you want to change or border color if you want to change anything you can change over here and apart from that this is a sample time for 10 you know for 30 seconds it is taking the real time trend option you can change that to minute also and this is a sample within 10 seconds it is taking the samples and go for ok and go for run time now the tank is zero correct i'll just check what tag we have chosen yeah this is level 2 everything is level 2 fine go for run time just wait it will be updating okay now the tank level is zero wait for some time yeah it is showing the time time as x-axis and the process variable is y-axis okay yeah so it is updating no so now the rank value is zero so it is updating you can see the time also here now increase the tank slowly slowly increase now the tank value is 34 let's see this is a real time trend okay so you can see the current value of the tank yeah can you see the graph which is increased increased correct so you can change the color if you want and you you can able to monitor multiple tags also yeah now it is 82 wait for it yeah it is updated got it guys so like this you can see the process variable in graphical uh, you know manner using this trend so see it is updated now along with the level you can have one more uh, parameter also 
keep it here and make that as pressure and uh, tag some other uh, variable take this level okay take the level keep it okay check on the window so now you are going to watch one more parameter so you need to give here level and give some different color we'll give blue and uh, just give the you know same thing you want to give you give and you can see the major and maximum uh, you know division if you want you just change it is updated can you see it is updated now go for online now you are having two parameters okay one is level another one is pressure so pressure was initially 80 so make that to zero wait for some time it will be updating yeah it is updating now can you see pressure is also updating so increase the level level we have given in the red color yeah right so now we increase the pressure to 100 so that will be in a blue color yeah that's it this is trend got it yes so just practice this trend in the software I'll meet you in the next session with another interesting topic. Fine. See you. Hello everyone. So in this session, we are going to see one more application of SCADA, which is dynamic data exchange, right? So what is this DDE? In short form, it is called as DDE, dynamic data exchange. So it is used to transfer and receive the data during the runtime with any third party software. Okay. So it is a protocol used for the communication, right? So your application is SCADA. You can use one more application that may be from any product like Microsoft, Microsoft product. So from that Microsoft product, you can get and transfer the data. Okay. For example, let's take an Excel file. So in an Excel file, you are having this slider value and you are having the, uh, you know, switch. Okay. So in Excel, you are typing 60. In a runtime, that will be updated in your SCADA runtime, SCADA file. Okay, in, in SCADA, in runtime, you can see the slider range according to the value you have given in the Excel file. So that is receiving and transferring data means whatever updating you are updating here, that will be you are seeing in, in uh, you know, that uh, Excel file also. Fine. So application 1 will be your SCADA and application 2 will be any third third party software like Microsoft. Right. So let's see how to do that. So for that, I'm going to take only two data. One is this level, okay, this level. And another one is this switch. I'm going to monitor this from Excel. So for that, I'm going to, this is a step one. Step one is fix which tag you want to monitor. Which tag you want to give when transfer data. Receive and transfer data. So these two are the parameters. First step. Second step is create an Excel file. Go to Microsoft Excel and just type. You are going to save the slider value here and you are going to save the, you know, switch value here. So slider will be here, switch will be here. Got it? So just save the file. Remember the name, okay? Uh, I'm just giving, um, what name I can give? Online. Just give online. My, my file name is online. Save it. That's it. Okay, minimize it. Second step is done. What is the third step means? Go to tag name dictionary. 
in a tag name dictionary whenever i was talking about the type i have told whenever you are using within scheda it should be memory fine now dde dynamic data exchange is not within scheda it should be outside from scheda also then it should not be a memory it should be io make this to io real right got it guys whenever you are changing this to io real and whenever you are going to save it let it be fine now we need to create a new uh, you know access name for this let's see how to create a access name so whenever you are clicking this detail it will give you some access name here okay there is a point called access name so click on that when you click on the access name go for add you you need to create a new access name go on go on for add option in the access name just give any name in access you can give any name or you can give some new access new access fine so node name no need to give in the application name you need to name the what is the name of the third party software okay now i'm going to have the excel file so excel is the third party software i'm going to use and uh, topic name means what is the file of the excel what is the name we have given online right this is the file name of our excel file and you need to give the extension of that what is the extension of the excel file means it is uh, excel sx okay just type online dot xl sx excel sx if you have any doubt in the extension you can go to the excel file and you can check what is the extension of the excel file okay and what protocol we are going to use is dd using this protocol only you are going to make a communication between your excel file and your scheda software okay so new access name is created go for okay choose close so new access is linked and in the item name you need to give where you are going to save your slider range so this is r2 right this is r2 and column 1 column 1 and row 2 here only you are going to save the slider value so here you need to give r2 c1 okay r2 c1 save it and uh, select the next tag what is our next tag which is our switch and this is also not memory discrete it should be io discrete go for okay when you click okay choose the access name as new access and here it which is already updated when you are doing the slider click okay and give the correct you know row to row to column to here only you are going to save now check it out here row to this is row to column to okay and you have saved it row to column to save it close it fine so you have done this and just save your complete file save it once you have done the save go for run time go to the second window right yeah this is our window right so now see in your excel file it is not updated anything now change make this to one check your excel file can you see your excel file is updated switch is one no now turn the switch to zero it is zero shall we change the slider range check the excel file yes it is updating so it is transferring all your values to excel how about receiving yeah change the file change the value to 1 here and change this to 100 so now you are updating in excel file and check in your in touch can you see it is 1 and it is 100 okay so it is transferring and also receiving so now change the file to 0 here and this is also 0 let's see whether it is updated in excel yes it is updated if you want you just minimize yeah yes 
okay now we see it is updated here see parallelly it is happening correct so this is dynamic data exchange guys so this is the application this is a small example i have given you can go for big uh, uh, you know applications also you will need to create the corresponding uh, you know title here and you need to give the proper uh, you know address like r2 c2 wherever you want to save you can change fine so this is dynamic data exchange so practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session with another example of uh, sorry not example another application of scada which is called as a recipe we'll see in the next session fine See you guys. Hello everyone. So in this session, we are going to see about one of the application of SCADA, which is script. Fine. So what is script and what we are going to do, whether it is having any types, we are going to see in this session. Fine. So script is like a language. Fine. So it is used to connect all the tags. Fine. So in a virtual simulation, what we have done, so we will be creating, uh, uh, you know, tag for the switch. And if you want to turn on a lamp, you will be giving the same tag name. Correct. I hope you have remembered in the initial sessions when I was talking about, uh, you know, uh, this virtual simulation. For example, take this. Right. So this is switch, this is lamp. Fine. So for this switch, I have given SW1 as a tag and to turn on this alarm, you should use same tag name. This is what I have told you, right? So you need to go for this, just double tap and select the tag. So this is virtual simulation. Virtual simulation like we are doing within SCADA. Fine. Go for this. So when you go for the online, this will be on because, because of that, this lamp will also be on because both are sharing the same tag name in a virtual simulation. Fine. This, this is the concept we have seen so far in all the virtual, you know, simulation concept for all the concepts we have covered. We have used the same concept. We were used the same tag name for all the you know, uh, you know, components, whatever we are taking from symbol factory or from for buttons, everything we have given the same tag name to understand and to study the, you know, tools in SCADA. Fine. Now, script in virtual simulation can use it to interlink two tags. Fine. For example, take this as a lamp, okay. And this is gonna be our switch. Just label it as. SWITCH and label this as lamp. Fine. So now what I am going to do for this we have already created a tag SW1. Fine. Now I am going to create a new tag for this. Got it? Just create a new tag L1. Fine. So this is a new tag. So this is a memory discrete. Fine. Go for OK. Go for close. Now, how to interlink these two? Whenever I am turning on SW1, L1 should turn on. There should be some link we need to give, right? Whenever you are going to, uh, you know, uh, uh, interlink two tags, you need to create some link between them. And that link is script. Fine. So script is like a writing a code for that or statements for this, right? So when I have explained about the action script, I hope you have remembered this. This one we have seen, no? In the in the action script, we will be writing like this statement and all we have written. So whenever we are pressing that, uh, you know, uh, switch or sorry, button, this per this function should be happening. 
this is action script like that we are going to write a script for this switch one and this l1 fine and obviously we need to follow some syntax let's see what is that syntax and all so syntax will be like Okay, first you will be writing the input condition if this switch is on. Like that you will be giving. Okay, switch if input condition you will be giving. If that is happening, you will be writing some statement. Then output statement. Okay, and you need to end if. And here also I here you need to have a semicolon. Fine. So this is a syntax for this simple control, discrete control system. Fine. So where we are going to write this syntax? That is a window script. So just right click. Okay, there are so many types of script. We'll see one by one. So, I'll, I'm introducing this window script to you. Just right click. See, we have seen the syntax and where we are going to write is in this window script. Just right click. Go for window script. Can you get the window? Yes. So, it is same like we have seen in the action script now. Yeah. So, here only I'm going to write. Fine. So, shall we write? Yeah. If... What is our input condition? What is our input tag name? Which is SW1, right? So if you know the you know uppercase or lowercase, whatever it is, you need to write it properly. Okay. So if you are not knowing, just double click. It will take you to the tag name dictionary. You just click that and you just type equal to equal to 1. If SW1 equal to equal to 1, what do I need to write? Yes, it is then. Then, what is the tag for our lamp? It is L1. So, better choose from here. Equal to 1. Semicolon. End. If semicolon. Okay. So, no issues if you forgot to put semicolon and all. No issues. It will tell you. See, we have written it. No, if it is having any error, it will be telling you. So, it is showing must be from 1, 2, 3, 6. Yeah. So, this is... Uh, Second, it should not be zero. Okay. So, what is this means? This script we have written will be continuously. It's like a loop. For every one milliseconds, this loop will be updating. Okay. So, now validate. Yeah, there is no error. For example, if you miss this semicolon and validate, it is telling you expecting semicolon. Fine. So, this should be the minute, the number you are giving here. Now, that will be in a milliseconds. So, what is the use of this time duration is, is the time delay, okay. So, it will be like for every, for example, here I have mentioned as 10. So, for every 10 milliseconds, it will be updating the loop. In the 10 milliseconds, I may turn off the switch again. That time it will update lamp is equal to 0. Okay, guys. Fine. So, it will be every time it will be checking whether this is happening, happening or not, not. Like that it will be checking fine so we have done the validate we have done okay just click okay just go for runtime see now we have two different tags and we have written the window script let's see whether it is happening yes it is happening see this is sw1 this is l1 and we connected both using the script then if we turn off it is not off why see here whenever i am turning on for the first time now that time only it was in on condition if i turn off it is not happening because i have not written anything to turn off correct see whatever i have written that is performing here so we have not written to turn off correct so go for the window script 
right so what i can write here is else you can write else l1 equal to 0 that's it i have just added the else validate there is no error go for run so turn on turn off okay so what is that else condition else means like if switch 1 is not equal to 1 do this that's what the else part for the else part whatever we had done to turn off l1 that's it right so now you have a full control to turn on and to turn off right so this is window script fine so whether this window script is only for uh, only one input or only one out not like that you can have multiple inputs also fine so let me take one duplicate of this and uh, we'll give the name as is a w2 new new tag it is so define it save close fine so now i have included one more new input go for window script and here you can type and is w2 Oh, see, I have I am writing in a uppercase, but whether check whether it is an uppercase or lowercase. See, it is in a lowercase. Okay, equal to equal to one. Just validate. Yeah, it is accepting. Now you have merged two inputs. Fine. Go for OK. Go for runtime. It's not turning on because you have given two conditions. Now it is on. Fine. Since I have given and, both need to on on to turn on a lamp. If one is off, lamp will be off because it is an and operation. And means what? Both need to be one to happen the output as one. Fine? To make the output to one. So like this, you can uh, include how many inputs you want. You can or uh, you can give R function also. See, I'll show you the R function. Can you see R here? Yeah. Because it is our function. 0, 1, 1. 1, 1, again 1. Fine. So, this is our function. So, like that you can have multiple inputs also, outputs also. So, make a duplicate of this. Keep it here. And name that as L2. Is a new tag. Save it. Close it. Fine. Now what I need to do, I need to include that in a statement. You can write L2 equal to 1. Fine. So here also you need to type L2 equal to 0. That's it. Validate. Okay. Go for runtime. Right. So now turn on. Both will be on because I have written a statement like that. There was a R, R condition, okay. So now if you off, it will, it will be, it remains in a on condition because this fellow is on, right. So I'm going to, this is a window script, however you are, how you are writing the script according to that it will run. That's fine, no. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. Now, so far in our, bin, uh, you know, in touch runtime, if I have not turned off this, for example, see, these lamp two, both the lamps are in on condition, no, because this fellow is on. So just go for development page. Okay, just do some changes or whatever you want. You just you just edit something over here and go back to your runtime. Still, it is in on condition. See, whenever I'm going for the new runtime, it should be starting from the beginning, right? It should not be in the place where I have left before, right? So previously, when I was uh, using the tank and all, whenever I'm increasing the slider, the tank will be according to that. If I go for the, uh, you know, development page, again, I come for the runtime, it should be in the same place. Okay, this is why. I'll tell you. So in touch will always start the runtime from where it, you have left. Okay, but if you want to start from the beginning, there is a way. For that, go to the window script. 
on hide okay no this one on show on show means not on hide on show on show means like whenever you are going for the first time you need to have this l0 as l1 as 0 and l2 as 0 validated yeah go for okay go for run time yeah so still it is an on condition for this to update this okay to update this you need to close your runtime and you need to come again fine then only it will get update see i left as it is go for the runtime yeah still it is on no why means this runtime window is there right this runtime window whatever update you are doing you need to close this runtime window and you need to start from the beginning so i'll close this fellow close runtime start the runtime from beginning can you see it's updated now i'll show you again now i'm turning on go for the development come for the runtime again it's updated oh it's not updated let's see what is the error? What mistake I have done? Let's check it out, okay? We have mentioned this is L1, this is L2. Both are zero. Yes, it's right. Okay. So instead of making this also include our uh, input conditions also because out input is the one which we are having in our hand to control okay output is the one which is depends upon the input correct see input should be controlled because it's in our hand. But output we cannot do anything because those two fellows are depends upon the input state. Now if you go for the runtime, it's in off. See, in previously the switch was in on condition. That's why these two were on. I got confused. Okay. Right. So now if I go for the development, again come for the runtime, it is off. I'll show you again. So on in on show, in on show you should be writing condition for inputs not outputs because output will be here to inputs not to us right yeah so this should be removed this is a mistake i have done so please correct it don't do this fine guys i hope you have understand because see why those outputs both are on because the input is an on condition so i should have the control to control the inputs so in on show you need to write this fine so go for valid and you can go for okay so hereafter you can write the script in on show also fine so that uh yeah i'll show you this also wait now i am changing the slider imagine huh 60 it is switch i'm turning on switch i'm turning on now note note down note down the runtime window both the switches are on this slider at 60 nearby fine at most is 60 fine go for development okay now come again for runtime both the switches are updated right but he see the slider it's not updated because i have not written any on show script for slider that's it guys fine shall we write that what is our tag slider go for window script in on show type or just double tap and select the tag name slider equal to zero that's it validate click ok go for runtime it's updated now check again go for development come for runtime again yes it is updated that's it guys okay so this is the window script fine and uh, in the window script you can write uh, for analog also see we have seen for uh, 
digital right so let's see one small example for analog also let's take a tank say i got a simple factory let's take one tank okay so the tank i'm going to get it from here take t and i'm going to get this blue tank since we have taken this from symbol factory what i need to do i need to break it so right click break cell fine so give vertical fill a slider yeah it is over there so make it as a common color click ok go for this fill color also or let it be do we need this yes we'll give yeah we'll give fine so whenever i am increasing the slider this this fellow will be increasing that's fine so now we need to write a script for this okay so how i can write means go for window script go for this while showing so just make up to this okay so just type when sw1 equal to equal to 1 then slider just double tap and select slider slider equal to 100 okay and if let's just give like this okay expecting semicolon where yeah here yeah now this is my switch one no if i turn on slider will be 100 yes see here but when i when i turn off nothing is happening because i have not written the script for that correct so let's write the script for that also go for window script while showing write else condition else zero that's it okay validate okay go for runtime yeah so if you turn on it will be 100 if you turn off it will be zero right so this is like immediate increase to 100 correct but i want slowly slowly like uh, how we are filling the vertical fill like that i want what i need to do i need to change the script go for window script and uh, in while show you just type what i can write means if you want to see one by one like slight increase you want means what i can do you can slider is equal to slider plus one can you get the point it will gradually increase okay it will be gradually increase Go for OK. Go for runtime. So just turn on this. Yeah, can you see? For every one milliseconds, it's gradually increasing. There is no need to change the slider. It's automatically happening. Okay. Fine. Turn off this. Got it? Yeah. Go to the development page. But in this example, there is a problem. Okay. What is the problem? I will tell you. Just take this. Keep it over here. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I am going to use that value display. I am going to check the value of our slider. Okay. So just I will show you what is the problem. Okay. Go for OK. Go for OK. Keep it this fellow here. So that you can be able to see. Yeah, go for runtime. Turn on this. It is gradually increasing. See, 15, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going. Huh? It is increasing above 100 also. Right? This is the problem I have told. If you turn off, it will off. But... If you remains the switch is in on condition, it is going beyond 100. 
that should not happen no because my program is written like there is no limit kind of i have written like that the limit is whenever i am turning off the switch then only it will go to zero apart from that i have not written any condition correct so i need to write a condition for that also because the tank need to be stop at that stage so for that you can expand the program okay so how you can expand means you take this else part okay you take this else part and write one more if statement okay if slider above or equal to 99 or let it be a 100 or whatever it is let it be a 100 equal to 100 then this fellow no who is that is w1 should be zero like that i'm writing okay let's check it out this end if validate this what i have done see i have given like automatic See, there is no need of uh, ourselves to turn off the switch. Let it, let, let it happen. Let it automatically happen kind of. Okay. Go for OK. Go for runtime. Now you are turning on. It is increasing. Once it reached 100, because of our statement, the switch will be off. Yeah. Right. The switch is off. That's it. You cannot turn on this. See, gradually it will be increasing if you turn on for the every time. Right. So like this, you can customize the program according to the requirement. Okay. You can make however you want here. If you want to gradually increase, you can else uh, you know uh, if you want to uh, immediately going to 100 that is also fine fine so however you are writing it will be responding fine guys so i hope you have understand the window script window script means it's only for this window see i have three windows you know the whatever i am writing in the window script that is apt to only for w1 not for w2 and w3 that is that's why it is called as window script. Fine. Right. So practice this in a software. I will meet you in the next session with another type of script. Fine. Okay guys. See you then. Bye. Hello everyone, so in this session we are going to see about application script, fine. So you can see the application script I have written over there. So in the previous session we have seen window script. At the end of the session I have told window script is only for the window we are writing. For example, see I am right clicking and I am writing a script over there, fine. So this is the script I have done got it so this is only for this page right so for example take this switch to and lamp to for this i'm writing a program go to while showing and just write a program here so if switch is equal to equal to one then l2 is equal to one else l2 is equal to of end if this is fine no a simple program i have written right so just go for ok go for runtime See, if you turn on, this will be on. If you turn off, this will be off. Correct. So, now go to the development page. What you can do? No. Just copy these two. Or I think we need to. Yeah, you can copy like this. Okay. Just copy or cut. Cut this and paste it in a page 2. 
okay so now you have a components in page 2 and this is window 1 i mean that is in a window 2 this is in a window 1 right so just go for run time the script i have written is in window 1 if you turn on this is not happening i have written a script for this right just now i have written a script but this is not happening can you understand the window script now okay because window script is written in this page so whatever i have in this page will be taking that window script but i have written a script in window 1 but i have put the components in window 2 so it is not happening what i need to do i need to write that script in window 2 see i need to take this and cut this and paste it in a window 2 then it will work i'll show you cut go to window 2 go for window script of this window while showing you type and on show also you need to type okay make this to one on show you just type uh, sw2 is equal to 0 fine go for validate go for ok go for runtime if you turn on it will be on now it is working correct so this is window script we have seen but it is not good no so see for each and every window how can i uh, you know differentiate the script okay so for that you need to use a application script okay application script like whatever you are writing in the application script script is like a universal all the windows have access to that fine so for example you can see the app uh, you know application script here can you see application click on that just copy your uh, second window second window uh, you know script you have you have done here okay just go this to this window script and delete this whatever you have written here delete that because now we are not going to use the window script okay right you are not you are not having any script in this now go for online it will work now even though window script is not written but application script is there it will be working right so even you can cut all these okay put it in application script right validate okay go for runtime this will be working same thing this is also working even though window script is not there it will be taking script from application fine guys so this is the use of application script so how many windows you are using you can you can make use of that in the application fine so this is apt for window 3 also whatever components you are putting write a script for that in application script it's like a universal guys like how we are using that universal variable in the programming like that this script is common for all the windows but window script is the dedicated window for that particular window that's it fine right so just practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session with another type of script fine yeah thank you hello everyone so in this session we are going to see the another application of SCADA which is called as recipe fine so generally what is recipe uh, it is a separate executable program that is used to create recipe template functions okay so let's take uh, any industry like uh, you know paint manufacturing industry or uh, you know coffee vending machine let's take any example okay 
so let's take a paint uh, manufacturing industry they will have a common color as uh, 3 to 4 only okay they are having we are having varieties of colors right so if you want to purchase some separate some different color like uh, any color you can take okay so how they are manufacturing that particular color they will be mixing their regular pigments their pigments are just 4 to or 5 four or five pigments only they will be having and by mixing proper ratio of these ingredients they can make the particular recipe okay i'll just give one small example okay so let's take um, purple color okay to make that color they need to add pigment to one and pigment two in the proper ratio like 50 percentage 50 percentage if they mix these two they can get purple color take some other color pink color to make to get that color they need to make pigment one as 80 percentage and pigment two as 20 percentage can you get the point they are making a different recipes from the pigments they are having depends upon the ratio of the pigment they are getting the required output right let's take one more simple example that we are going to see in our session now let's make a coffee vending machine if you want a strong coffee uh, what are the ingredients generally for coffee? It will be milk and coffee powder, water, sugar. Let's take these four are the ingredients, right? So for the strong coffee, you should have a coffee powder more, right? For the light coffee, coffee powder should be less. Sugarless coffee means without sugar. More sugar if someone wants. According to that, it is, you know, the ratio of the ingredients will get changed according to the requirement. Got it? So that is recipe. For each and every requirement, there is no need to write different, different program. For strong coffee, there is no need to write different project. For light coffee, there is no need to write different project. But in the same project, by using this recipe, you can manage all the recipes with the proper ingredients. And that is this recipe manager. Okay, got it. So let's see what is, uh, how to do this, right? So... I'm going to take three switches, fine. So let's take three switches. Let's take like this knob switch. Keep it here. Make this as ST strong coffee. Okay, for strong coffee, I'm I'm creating a new label. I mean new tag. This is a memory discrete. Save it. Close it. And even you can change the label here. Okay. So this is a strong coffee label. Fine. And to get a duplicate of this. Keep it over here. Like make a medium coffee. Medium. And create a new tag. Create a new respective tag. This is also I'm defining and this is also memory discrete. Fine. And uh, one more duplicate let's take for light coffee. And just keep it here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, rename this as light. Define it. These are all the new tags. Fine. Yeah. Change the label also. Change the label to light. Fine. Yeah. So, whenever I am pressing strong, uh, you know, uh, switch, I should get a strong coffee. And uh, a necessary ingredient should be in the proper ratio. Fine. So, let's take uh, what are the ingredients we are having for this. Let's write milk. Fine. So milk is one rece one uh, ingredient, and uh, what is next? Sugar, coffee, powder, and uh, the last one is water. So these four are the necessary ingredients. Fine. So for this ingredient, just have a number here. Just write hash hash hash. Okay. And for this also, you write hash, hash, hash. Because milk, 
sugar, coffee powder, these are all another tags. Okay, we need to create a tag for that. I am just giving like this. Fine. Create a hash, hash, hash. Okay, fine, got it. Now go to tag name dictionary and create a new tag for this. Go for new, just type milk. Okay, milk. This is memory discrete. Is this a memory discrete? No, right? This is a memory real. Because this is an analog value, right? That's what. Fine. Save it. Better for the minimum and maximum value, we make this to 0 and the max value is 100. Save it. And one more new. One more new is what? Our uh, sugar. This is also memory real in 0 to 100. Save it. Go for new. C powder. Coffee powder. This is memory real. Same. Close it. Save it. One more new is our water. Fine. So yes. Save it. Right. And close it. Now go to this place. And go for value display. Analog. What is the value over here? This is a milk. Right. So choose the respective tag. Okay. Okay. And this one sugar is the respective tag. Show value. Get sugar. Here it is. Save it. You need to click both OK. Coffee powder. Choose a coffee powder. C powder. I have written that the C powder, right? Yeah. Here it is. Save it. And the last one is our water. Analog. Go for water. Water. Where it is at last. Yeah. W no. So this water. Fine. Got it. So now what exactly need to happen? No. If I press strong. Here. The values will be displayed. That and all we are going to do up next. I am just telling you. If it is strong. These values should happen. If it is medium. Some other value need to happen. If it is light. And some other ingredients. I mean ingredients should be same. But their uh, value should be different. Okay. Let's keep it here. You can arrange it in a good way. Okay. You can create a tabular column. You can draw a tabular column. And you can put it inside that. Whatever you can, you want, you can. I'm just writing this for a example. Fine. Got it, guys? Yeah. So, yeah. Everything, whatever we want, everything is here. Now, we need to create a recipe. What is the recipe? We are having three recipe. One is strong coffee. Another one is medium coffee. Another one is light coffee. Got it? So, where you can find the recipe manager means it will be in the tools. So, in the tools, in the application, you can find the recipe manager. Can you see recipe manager? Click on that. So, recipe manager window came. Now, go to file and click new. Okay. So, once you click new, it is giving you three windows. Right. It is giving you three windows. One is this template. Another one is some recipe definition. Another one is some unit definition. Three windows are there. So, just go with template definition. Okay. So, template definition is the one which you need to do first. So, what does a template means? Here, you are going to write what are all the items name you are having and what are the items type. Okay. Item names means nothing but an ingredient. Okay. There is no need to tag something. You need to type here. Okay. So, what I am going to do now, milk. First item name is milk. Once you type, just click enter. If you are not clicking enter, it will not come. It will not update. Right. Next one is sugar. Enter. And uh, what next? C powder. No. You can give any name here. Okay. Don't, uh, uh, you know, it's not exactly like the tag name. It's You can give any name. See, I have not pressed uh, uh, enter. It, it went. Enter. Yeah. What is last? Water. Yeah. So, what is the item type? This is a data type. 
okay what is the data type it's not discrete right it is analog so just type a n a l o g analog enter and here also a n a l o g enter that's it so template definition is done what are all the ingredients you are having and what is the data type of that that's it in a template definition right next go for unit definition where is unit yeah here it is unit definition so this unit definition is important okay so in the re same recipe manager you can have more ingredients i mean more recipes you can make i mean what i'm telling now now i'm creating a coffee vending machine recipe like that you can go for uh, you know this uh, paint paint manufacturing industries or any other uh, ingredients you want to create a recipe for that also you can use the same recipe manager now i'm going to create one unit i'm name this is r1 okay and here i need to i need to tag it okay what is the milk and what is the sugar i need to tag it this unit name is very very important fine so just give just double tap it will take you to the tag name dictionary page fine yeah so here for milk what is the tag name you have created that one you need to choose milk yeah then sugar right sugar it is then sea powder then water yeah so this unit should be any name you can give i'm just giving the reference as r1 and i have tagged this to the corresponding items got it guys next is our recipe manage recipe definition okay so you have created tag and you have created the unit name next is you need to specify the recipe name my first recipe is uh, strong coffee strong okay oh let's see i i have not entered so it gone click enter so strong s t r o n g for strong coffee milk how much percentage okay it depends upon i am just giving as percentage you can give uh, the corresponding value you, how much uh, you know ratio you want to give for milk like that okay so for strong coffee i am giving this is 40 okay enter and sugar is uh, you know 30 you just random value i am giving okay so coffee powder should be also 40 and the water should be 10 like that i am just giving the recipe right ingredients ratio and what is my second recipe is which is my medium coffee and click enter and here the milk should be less than that and uh, this gonna be enter this gonna be again 30 and this medium i'm going to just enter medium yeah for sea powder i'm just giving this as 30 okay and water i'm giving it as 20 fine and what is the last recipe i'm having which is light coffee the name i'm typing now that is also important you just keep this see i have written in a small letter strong medium and light right so milk here it should be 20 and uh, coffee powder let it be as 20 and here uh, that is sugar no sugar let be as 20 and coffee powder also make it as 20 and water is uh, 30 okay so these are all the ingredients and the respective ratio for the respective recipes done now hope you have understood up to this after that go to file save it so wherever you want you can save i'm just creating in a d drive in a d drive in touch recipe okay so i'm just giving the new name as uh, c i'm just typing this is just our coffee yeah right just save it so your recipe is saved in this place can you see d colon this name is important okay right got maximize
got marks in my I couldn't able to set that hold on I need to get that place yes I got it now see this name this name is very important okay I think here you cannot copy that but just note on this name d colon backslash in touch slash not hyphen recipe slash coffee dot csv this name is very very important you just note it down it will be useful whenever we are writing the script for this right so we have saved it no just saved it yeah already it is saved just minimize it right so we have created the ingredients and the corresponding values now the main thing fine you need to write a script so just right click go for window script okay go for window script right so in this just on show just make all the switches to zero medium is there equal to zero like that you need to go for strong and light also light equal to zero this is on show i hope you have remember what is on show we have discussed in the you know what is that script session fine yeah so while showing what i need to write here that is important no so i'm writing if first i'm writing a script for strong if s-t-r-o-n-g my strong uh, switch is equal to equal to one then what should happen the respective recipe should download for that i'm going for the function go for all when you go for all you can see the recipe oh, not this one wait a minute just go for all function you can see the recipe load here this one recipe load fine recipe load you need to click once you click the recipe load you will get the recipe load with the file number unit name and recipe name like this okay so file name is where your recipe file is saved i have told you to note down some name no this one this one d colon this one we need to type here with uh, you know this one with uh, double quotes with the du within double quotes we need to type you know here here it is just double quotes inside that you need to type so what i'm going to do now instead of going and typing i'm just going to d colon in the d colon i have created in touch recipe no so i'm going to this folder and i'm just clicking just select this so you can copy this copy after that we need to add this coffee file just paste it here so d colon so it came no after that again one backslash what is that our file name coffee that is in small letter coffee dot c s v this is the file extension name that also you need to type okay so first is file name where your you saved your file and the extension with extension you need to type okay up next is unit name do you remember what is that unit name that is our r1 i have typed r1 no if you want i'll show you can you see r1 this one okay that also in double quotes then my recipe name what is my recipe name first recipe that is in small letters s t r o n g okay strong that's it after that you need to give in diff so i went to this all function and i have put recipe load after that i have given the corresponding details this is file name this is unit name and this is the recipe name validate it give the semicolon here and make this to one fine guys 
so this is for strong the same thing i need to write for medium and light also no so what you can do no just copy this paste it down and make this strong as medium first medium and here also you need to change the recipe name as medium okay right because all the recipes are saved in same r1 and same file correct now again copy and make this to light first i'll change this because that is the recipe name l i t e and here i need to go for l i t e right validate there is no error go for okay fine shall we check in the online yes i'll go yeah so everything is zero if i turn on strong my respective ratio scheme can you see milk sugar coffee powder water fine got it now just turn on if you turn on this it is changing can you see for medium it is changing right if you turn on light and again it is changing can you see guys the respective ingredients and the respective ratios are there so for strong for medium and for light got it that's it what if for example this is strong if i change to medium it is showing the medium if i'm changing light it is updating the light okay so it will take the last input whatever you are updating it will be happening it is a one time okay it is reading it for one time yeah that's it so if you turn off if you want this to go to zero means you need to write a script for that go to development we can customize this however you want you can put a tank from symbol factory and you can uh, you know give some pipe pipe symbols you can take and milk is coming water is coming coffee like that you can make you can customize the same example as per the requirement fine so go to the window script while showing you just type yells else all the parameters need to zero what is the parameter milk equal to zero correct sugar equal to zero c powder equal to zero fine what is the last water is equal to zero right hello everyone so in the previous session we were seeing the recipe and uh, due to some power loss i couldn't able to continue that so i am recording this again for you so let's see where where we have left so when we went for the run time it was updating for strong coffee for medium coffee for light coffee it was updating so whenever strong was going zero it was still showing the strong value so for that i told we need to write a script like this this is also we have seen right so we have updated like yells milk is equal to zero sugar is equal to zero. everything we are updating for each and every condition so for medium also i have updated yells and for light also i have updated yells now go for online so now it is initially zero if you turn on it's not updating 
see it's not updating right if you turn on it is also not updating for last option it is updating okay so the problem is with writing the script okay so the script we have written is like it is taking the last else part fine it is taking only the last last else part it is not at all bothering about the condition of strong and condition of medium so for each and every condition there is no need to write a else part just delete this and delete the end if also what i'm going to write here is i'm going to write nested if for this so if this is happening it will do if this is not happening it will check for this else if okay if this is also not happening it will go for this there is this it will go and check for the third condition that is also else if okay if this is also not happening it will go for the last else function okay so you are having three you have used a three if statement no so you need to use three if end if just copy paste it paste it that's it right so instead of using if statement continuously i'm using else if statement and at last i have put only one else statement right go for okay go for okay now initially it is zero strong if you turn off it will go back to zero this is the one we are we were expecting right turn on turn off turn on turn off that's it okay it will not update for light see because medium was the one which turn on first right guys so this is a way and you can customize this however you want i'll tell one small customization so i'm writing here as strong and this should be blinking when this strong is on okay right text color i'm changing line color i'm just giving fill color also red some some colors i'm giving so whenever strong is on this fellow will be blinking like that you can go for when light is on you can get to know no what exactly now it is happening for that only i'm doing this for medium also you are giving blink option as medium tag you need to tag the corresponding one medium here it is go for okay go for okay next one is light choose that l i t e yes click on this go for bling choose the light tag where is light here it is yeah now go for run time can you see it is blinking so that you get to know it is strong that's it then medium then light right that's it guys let's practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session fine yeah thank you hello everyone so in this session we are going to see how to print a report in intouch okay so we are having three windows right so just go to file and go for print option so in intouch it is very simple okay so just go for the print option and it is asking what are all the uh, you know windows or what are all the features you want to have in a report so i'm just clicking 
the data entries which is details alarm information whatever it is okay so what i'm going to choose means i'm going to choose everything so just tick mark everything so that you'll get all the details of the project in the report fine so which windows you want whether you want particular windows or you want all everything you can select over here fine so just select everything and go for next if you don't want such things for example if you don't want this script means you can uncheck this right so better select everything and go for next it is asking in which format you want it is having a pdf it is having a document writer and moviecon pdf writer onenote and onenote 2010 windows 10 so there are so many options i'm going to choose pdf right so just select that and click ok if you want you can change and one more option html file in that also you can make right so i'm going to choose a printer option and i'm going to choose the pdf right go for print so it is printing right since it is a pdf it is asking where to save so you can choose the file location so i'm choosing the particular location and uh, i'm just typing this is the report you are giving the pdf file name fine just go for save so it is saved over there let's check the folder so just open see it is created and it is having 485 kb depends upon the project size just open and watch what is over there it is opening so what and all we have selected in that option it will be listed in the report see it is having 34 page right so this is the home page no so whatever we have in the home page is listed here since it is a a4 sheet it is giving with the time date everything and you can see and uh, these are all the details in w1 fine like that you can get for all the pages this is our second page window 2 and the details of the window 2 window 3 so these are all the details of that window 3 ok and the script you have used in that everything will be listed in this report fine so this is the way to get a report in in touch fine so just practice this in a software i'll meet you in the next session with another topic like how to import and export windows fine so see here we are having three windows no how to get the same three windows in some other project right we'll see in the next session until then bye hello everyone so in this session we are going to import and export windows fine for example in this particular project we have created three windows got it so three windows are here no suppose if the same windows you are going to use it in some other project correct so what we need to do in that project we, is it we need to create the same window like this no need of that we have an option to export and import windows so that in a new project also you can able to use the same windows fine let me check how to do that right so first fix what are the windows you want to export in my case i want all the three windows to export right this, this is my recipe window like that i'm having this main window and also i'm having window 2 fine so just go to file click export export window it will give you cannot export windows if any windows are loaded close all windows 
So to export and import windows, we need to close all, all the windows. So just right click, close. Yes, just give yes. Here also, you just close it. See, once you are closing, it is not showing the yellow color. Correct. So just close this also. Yeah, so all the windows are closed. Now go to file, go for export window. It is asking where to save your window. So I'm going to choose the same folder. This is the folder I have created now for recipe. In the same folder, I'm going to place all my windows. So just click OK. So it is asking how many windows you want. Suppose if only one window you want to export, you need to choose only one. Now I have already told I want all. So select all, click OK. It is exporting. Yeah, export is done. Now we need to go to the folder and we need to check it out. So let's check. Yes. Can you see? This is the new file. Right. So these three are the new file. I mean the windows. Got it guys? So now what I am going to do now. I am going to open a new project. In that project I am going to import. Import the same windows. Right. So just close this. Just exit everything. Shut down. Now everything is done. So now I am going to open my InTouch again. We will create a new project. Okay. Go for okay. Yeah. So this is the new project I have created. Inside that nothing is there. Okay, if you want, you can create a new project. I have already have an empty project. So, just open this. Yeah, see, I have an empty project. There is no windows, right? So like an empty project like this, you just go for file, go for import. Got it guys? Go for import. It is asking for from which location you want to import. So I am going to choose the same folder where I have so saved my previous windows. Right? So this is the folder I have selected. Go for OK. And it is asking how many windows you want. Go for OK. I mean click on windows and select what all the windows you want. I am going to have all the windows. So select all. Click OK. And use import. So just open. See. You have imported all the three windows. Got it guys. Right. So this is the way to get the windows. Right. So just practice this in the software. So we have seen report generation and the import and export windows. Fine. I'll meet you in the next session. Right. Bye. Hello everyone, in this session we are going to see the example in Intouch. So how to design a simple process in SCADA, right? So for that I am going to get help from a PNID diagram. So what is this PNID? Any idea? So uh, PNID is piping and instrumentation diagram. Okay, so these are all the fundamental importance in process automation and process industry so we can tell this it show the interconnection of process equipment and instrumentation used to control the process fine so it will be like a diagram i'll show an example for that yeah this is the heat exchanger okay there is a process with a heat exchanger and this is the pnid diagram for this example right so here you can find the heat exchanger so here 
there is some you know uh, like a cylindrical uh, object right so this is the symbol of heat exchanger in pnid diagram fine so above that you can see some tt with uh, round it's like a circle right so tt is nothing but a temperature transmitter and above that tic means it is a temperature indicator controller and this is the control wall symbol and this is the hand wall symbol fine and these are all the signals see the dashed signals or electrical signals and a signal and a line with a cross mark this is the temperature signal and here can you see this line with the hash this is the pressure pressure signal so like that even signals are also having various symbols in pn id okay so you can tell it is a diagram of the system or equipment present in the section of the plant and shows the necessary graphical element to execute monitor and control specific processes so a pn id diagram does not describe the a uh, reaction involved in the process nor does it describe the procedure of the same okay it will not describe any procedure or this one is happening not like that it is just the replication of your field instruments located in a field in the software okay so i'm going to take this heat exchanger example as the first one so let's see how to design this in the software fine so just go to our in touch right so all the equipments we need to take it from the symbol factory if it is available in the wizard you can else we need to take it from the symbol factory fine so let's check out for the heat exchanger first just have a look into this diagram once again we need heat exchanger we need control valve we need this tic and transmitter here one transmitter and here one controller that may be our plc okay and here one control valve and this ty is the i to p converter fine because controller cannot communicate with control valve directly so we need i to p converter so controller signal will be current that will be converted to the pressure got it guys yeah so let's see how to do this in a in touch so first i'm going to take a heat exchanger so heat exchanger is not over here in the wizard section so i am going for the symbol factory go there first select what are the components we are in need right so heat exchanger you can get it from process heating column yeah here process heating column in that i am going to take this heat exchanger so there you are having multiple heat exchanger okay so it's your option like how it is exactly matching in your process according to that you need to choose got it yeah so i'm going to take this heat exchanger and above that what we have seen one transmitter right so go for the symbol factory okay go for the symbol factory and go for the sensor column there you can find some good transmitter symbols see temperature transmitter two temperature generic this is another transmitter so let's take this one okay and uh, keep it over here above this right and above that what we have seen we have seen a controller so i have told you that may be the plc so go to the controller column and check out what type of plc you want um let's take this one yeah this day this one will take and keep it over here and now i think we are in need of three more components one is the manual valve over here another one is a control valve over here and one more is controller i'm um, sorry it's a converter right so let's go to the valve type let's go to the valves in that let's take one control valve first i'm going to take this one control valve and just keep it let it be here and one more hand valve like a manual valve i want so it was yeah it should be like this hand valve because manual valve means what we need to close and we need to open it 
so you should have some hand you know the handle kind of so better we'll choose this one this one or let it be this one hand wall great go for this keep it over here right one more thing is pending which is a converter right so i think here there is no converter session see there is no converter sessions over here right so we can go for some let's check whether we if you if you can able to find some box kind of thing you can go with that else you can take one box and put that as i2p converter right I think here it will not be there so what we can do we can take one box let's take a box keep it over here and mark that as i2p converter right i i2p fine that's it i think we have taken all the components now the remaining part is the connection right see we have taken everything and one more thing is here the in a pnid there is no need to you know in a pnid they have mentioned what type of signal it is correct and in a scada there is no need to give such signals you can just connect all the components that's more enough right so shall we start from here from this team in right we'll start from here one input is coming to a control valve so let's keep a control valve just parallel to the heat exchanger right you can take a pipe take a pipe go for yes you can to go for some horizontal pipe let's connect it here there is a grid option no that's what just uh, turn off the grid and connect wherever you want if you are having a grid no then that will be uh, according to the point you need to connect else you just connect like this fine you can take a pipe or else better take a line that's also fine right that is also fine but yes you can take a pipe here and whatever i'm going to do here means i'm just connecting one line here and take a arrow mark repeat last object what happen okay i have taken a line no that's what it is repeating just go for symbol factory go for a arrows where is arrows yes here it is you can choose the arrow Just take like this. Make it short. Just delete this. Now we don't want a line. You can type here as steam in. Steam is coming inside this, right? So you can type that also if you want. Or else, after connecting everything, you can go for the text option for all. That is also fine, right? So we'll connect everything. Then at last we'll go for the text option. Got it? Now, next we need to connect from this control valve to heat exchanger right so just copy this one paste it here connect here just make it like this that's it fine after that 
we need to connect these two i2p converter in this one or control valve just take a line connect these two it's not straight go for a line just connect Still it is not straight. Let's do one thing. Start from here. Connect up. What happened? Just a minute. It's loading. And got struck, I think. Let's see. So let's check out this we have connected these things and now this is gonna be the steam in so let's type the remaining details at last together fine so now what is the next one we need to connect the remaining components right so let's take a line connect it here yeah that's it fine so the next line is between let's take a polyline take from controller from controller to this i2p converter that's it right so you can make this object to align back to send to back or oh, send come to you know bring to front bring to front so that that line is gone and the text is now gone no so we need to arrange it according to that now click on this line right click send to back got it so like that you can make a alignment now from our temperature transmitter from heat exchanger to temperature transmitter take a line connect like this i think for connecting lines and all you can take a grid again because that alignment is missing no that's what so wherever you want take a grid else you don't take a grid now see that that issue will not be there you just extend the line yeah that's it and here also you can bring that to send to back send bring to front got it now from here to our controller that's it now what else from our controller to i2p converter is already there right make this yeah now from heat exchanger to hand wall right manual wall connect from here i think here you can take a pipe fine so let's go for symbol factory take a pipe take a horizontal or vertical pipe like this let's take this it here
and again one horizontal pipe copy and paste keep it bit side and you can connect here yeah like this you just extend this according to that you need to align the vertical pipe also just make the size to small according to this right just increase the width a bit or decrease the uh, you know width of the horizontal one I'm going to take that from the symbol factory so that we will get the exact size. Take it from here. Yeah. Just place it exactly. right now again one outlet is also going right yeah that is a product which is coming from outside so you can take one more here that's it arrange it right that's it i think almost all the components and connections are done right here one heated product out is there heated product out you can take this just make this here so that it is going for the heated product out fine if you want to just expand this you need to be very careful because it is changing the size also if you are doing that got it so remaining and all i think it is a text so let's type steam in control valve heat exchanger transmitter controller and all right so let's type here as steam in control valve right and this gonna be the heat exchanger ch a and right the spelling is wrong just type again H A T E X C H A E N G E R. Fine. And this is gonna be the manual wall. And uh, and here, which is some steam out and heated product out. yes right and this is going to be the controller and uh, this is transmitter right 
mean this is i to p converter which is already written as i e bar p right so this is the simple system we have done right so for this transmitter if they want to you know in a scada if they want to monitor what is the value of the transmitter means they will be choosing like this they will be putting here as hash 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 and once you click that it will take you to the animation page now here you need to show the value of the tag right you need to tag it tag the particular variable you have created for this transmitter so it will be showing the transmitter value here same thing if you want to show the status of the valve control valve or manual valve you can use this value display fine so like this you if you want to give the arrow mark you can give the arrow mark here also you can see i'll just copy this i'll just paste it here which is the arrow mark indicates that it is the product out just keep it here so that it will be product out like that you can customize according to the requirement so steam out is here some steam out you need to take one valve i mean line keep it here this is also steam out that's it right so this is the simple one we have seen heat exchange of so pn id comparing to you know by seeing pn id you need to design the scada page fine so just practice this in the software guys i'll meet you in the next session with another example fine yeah bye Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see the next example, example number two, which is sewage water treatment plant. Fine. So for this, I don't have uh, you know reference diagram for that. I'll just tell the process according to that. We will select the components and we will, we are going to design it. Fine. So when it comes to sewage water treatment plant, there are three steps. One is uh, like primary, secondary, and tertiary. okay or you can take it as preliminary primary on secondary so we need to collect a tank we need to have a you know sewage collecting tank fine so from that we are going to screen that okay the second thing is screening then we need to do the segment then we need to send that to the segmentation tank so in the segmentation tank so all the particles will get segment and the remaining will be pumped to the chlorine tank fine so the chlorine tank and uh, the oxidation tank or the biological process so that was the third one after that after the chlorine tank we can get the pure water okay this is a simple sewage water treatment fine so you can see some difference in the sewage water treatment in the exact plan but this is a simple one uh, for the example i have taken got it so let's see how to do that so initially i'm going to have one small control panel for uh, you know start and stop so for that i'm just going for the wizard and i'm selecting the buttons so what i'm going to do means let's take one start and stop push button so instead of taking in a wizard let's go to the symbol factory itself let's take one start and stop push button fine yeah so let's go for this for start right keep it here and uh, repeat the last object and go for stop got it guys so i am going to reduce the size right so just reduce it to minimum so put it here right and take a text s t a r t for start and uh, we are having stop over here 
right so see here i am going to just design it okay after that uh, when you are connecting to the plc or when you are uh, giving the tax you need to break the symbol factory symbols and you need to do that fine so that part and all is different guys don't confuse with that make this to back side that's it fine this is a small control panel and let's start with the storage tank fine so let's go for the symbol factory go for it go for tank option so what are the tanks we want let's take now itself tank yes here it is which one we can take it for first we'll check out for the storage tank you can take anything okay no issues you can take this one you can take normal tank like this also you can take and just check we'll check all the uh, you know tank then we will choose one is a kind of tank support is there so let's take one tank support first keep it let it be there then we will arrange now choose one tank or you can take this oh this is a kind of reactor okay let's take let's take this since we are having more options it's bit you know choices are more no so selection is also taking some time okay let's go with the normal tank no issues let's keep it here keep it here yeah let it be done right then we need to have one more tank which is a segmentation tank right go for it take a tank like this and uh, keep it here if you want you can keep uh, you know stand for all right it will be like this then we have a chlorine tank i'm going again to the symbol factory come on it got struck yeah let's take it's a chlorine tank keep it like this then the last tank is where the purified water is going to place fine let's take that also let's take this yeah let's take with the you know stand kind of this right yeah keep it this side now we need to start connecting all the process fine right got it now we are going to start the process from here this side fine now take a connection right so we will be this water is collected from somewhere so just give the reference like a pipe you can uh, put it over here so it is collecting all the sewage 
you know tank over here i mean whatever over here right after that from this tank to segmentation tank we need to have a pump over here okay so what is the working of pump pump will be pumping the sewage water from this place to screening part we need to have one screening also here so let's go for kind of screening option if it is there let's take that let's go for the chemical industry yeah let's check out for some screening yeah If you couldn't able to get the proper component, you can take one rectangle and you can name that, right? So let's check out in some other place. Process cooling. Let's check out here. Okay, it's okay. Fine. Let's take some component for the screening process. Okay. Last time we'll check. We'll take the pump first. We'll take a appropriate pump for that. Let's take this. We'll take this. We'll keep it here. Hold on, it's loading. Reduce the size. Keep it here. One last time I'll check for that. Okay, I'll take one box and I'll put it here for screening. So it will be like a, like a you know a, a rectangle box with uh, uh, some partitions over it fine so let it be like this let the box be like this you need to pick and place that box correct correctly over here after the pump and before the segmentation tank got it that was the one pending work now you just search for that okay so now after this we need to have a before this uh, you know uh, screening we should have one valve over there let's take a valve so the screening part will be exactly looks like our controller like a rectangle box with uh, you know huge segmentations 
let's check for the val it's okay vals let's go for Let's take this. Reduce the size. Keep it here. Like this. Connect like this, and uh, oh, you can connect like this, and nearer to that your pump. That's it. Fine. Now from screening to segmentation tank, we need to have a pipe. Fine. So you can take a pipe option. You can take a pipe. Let's go for. Miscellaneous pipe. You can take this. Just take this first. Connect. Take a vertical and vertical we have taken. Let's take a horizontal also. Just put it over here. Reduce the size. That should be exactly matching the vertical one. Or better, instead of taking this separately, you can take this one. Yeah, like this. Okay. Connect here. Right. If you want, just reduce the size. Put it here exactly. Then after that, if you want, you just connect this. That's it. Just keep the tank here. Make that to front. Keep this with that side. Got it. So this is done. Let's make this to friend. Yeah. And I think we need to keep it exactly like the previous one. I mean the this pipe. Right. This is the better option, I think. Yeah. Got it? Now, from this also, we need to connect a, you know, pipe to our uh, segmentation tank. So, let's take the corresponding one.
let's keep this also right so segmentation tank is there so inside uh, segmentation we need to have a you know this pipe is coming inside so this one should have some support over there so you can take a stand like this so just copy just copy and paste it or you can take some other some other stand another stand was there right you can take that also fine right so after this we are going to do the same pipe and one pump to the chlorine tank fine we need to have a one pump and one valve to the chlorine tank so let's i'm going to copy this and paste it over here right and uh, yeah, i think we can copy these both copy paste right so keep like this and uh, keep this one here and after this from that we are going to have a one more valve so take this copy paste keep it you can choose the keyboard options to move yeah right and uh, we are going to connect one valve so take a same valve so that the size will not be the issue it will be looks like same in all the place yeah that's it right and uh, we are going to have one more uh, connection valve like this to get into the chlorine tank so let's take copy of this and copy of this i think we need a bit to reduce it yeah paste it paste it here just yeah just arrange it according to that and uh, here comes our chlorine tank fine this is a chlorine and for chlorine we are having a oxidation tank aside kind of oxidation tank so let's take one more normal simple tank where is the tank option yes here it is let's take a kind of tank like this and this gonna be the oxidation tank so let's connect that oxidation tank and uh, chlorine tank You can take a pipe from here also. Just I'm mean, just take one open end. Make a smaller size. Make it bit smaller and keep it over here. Make it bit smaller. Yeah, exactly like this. Keep it aside. Yeah. Now we need to connect this. This went to our chlorine tank with one valve. like this then we need to have one valve so let's take one kind of hand valve with one side uh, that handle okay so go for it where, where it is which one we can take kind of this make it small I 
I'm just using that petal. Take one more copy of this. Make this to front. bring to friend that's it fine so this chlorine tank should have a, a you know kind of reaction over there that biological process will be happening in the chlorine tank so then again same pipe uh, pump and pipe to the purifying tank I mean purified tank so I think we need to go for the same setup just make this to front so let's copy the same thing whatever you are having here everything we need to copy exactly so just select yeah, we can select the components just go for the grid I couldn't able to select okay let's it will just be and just copy one each one by one then this one keep it here then again let's arrange it later and again this one at last this right let's arrange it now make it up that's it Keep it aside. Make this two bit small. I mean, we need to reduce the length. After that, we need to connect like this. Or else, you can delete this. You can directly connect this one. Right? We can make this two bit up. So, this is the last one. Last process. Fine. So, after that, then outlet will be there. That is different. So let's go for that option also. Let's go for the outlet. Maybe here you will be having some valve. Here also you can have one valve. Right. So this is the the main parts and all is done. So remaining we need to name it. And uh, we need to have a fan in segmentation in this chlorine tank. So let's check out for that where it is. I think we will not have a fan option. Let's, yeah, it will be kind of motor. No, it will not be here. It's kind of blower we can check, I think. Yeah, here it is. Can you see here? Yes, when let's take this. Keep it here. Just keep it here. That's it. Fine. So see the components will get changed. This is a simple sewage water treatment plan. So the components will change. Please note that according to the PNID diagram whatever you are referring. Please draw 
please take the components according to that this is this is just an example fine so let's if you want you can uh, have a high level sensor low level sensor in all the tanks okay because uh, this tank will start processing or will start pumping once it is reached the high level sensor that and all you can take according to the requirement now i am going to write the components i mean the tank name and all okay storage tank fine and uh, this gonna be the screening n i n g okay the next is a pump and that that is gonna valve one pump right so the next one is valve one v one what happened just type v a l v e one just type here as sedimentation tank right and uh, another pump over here and this is going to be the valve too Just type pump pump valve three three right yeah this is Oxidation tank, and this is chlorine tank. You can arrange it according to the requirement, and uh, purified water tank. right and if you want you can write uh, this is a preliminary process this is the uh, you know secondary process this is a tertiary process like that you can give the reference also got it so if it if we have created this scada right so once you are done with the program you can give the uh, you know animation properties like that filling and all we have seen right horizontal vertical filling horizontal filling like that you can give that to tank this pipe this pump will be blinking or it will be changing the color it will be changing the color you know see just break it first we need to give a tag for this okay when you will be in you know, this fill color right so you can give if zero means it will be in a you know red color or else uh, you know when it goes to you know on it will be in some other color like that you can give the reference so now i cannot give any tag right so like that you can give animation properties to all the tanks all the tanks all the pipe pump you know even this uh, start and stop switch for everything you can give got it so this is a simple example we have seen so just practice this in the software and also just try to ex you know customize this uh, example you can add so, so more components uh, uh, you can add more details to this and uh, you know like that you can give you if you want to know the tank level uh, you can give this you can give one small uh, box and you can give what is the tank level over here now like that you can you see by going to this you can give the analog value right so like that you can customize your application fine so yes so this is a simple example i have taken so just practice this in the software and just try to customize it got it guys so i'll meet you in the next session with another topic fine yeah bye
Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see one example problem, right? So for that, I'm going to take a slider, right? So just keep the slider over here. Just create a tag for this. Define it. Save it. Close it. And if you want, you can increase the range of slider or let it be. Fine. Now I'm going to take a conveyor belt. Go for symbol factory. Go for a conveyor. Yeah, conveyors are here. Go for miscellaneous. Just take a conveyor. Take a duplicate of this and keep it. Yeah, right. So, if you want, you can have one more. Like this. Fine. So, just keep it a bit down. Right. Now, let's have a bottle filling system or uh, the, bo the box which is moving from one end to another end. Like that will do something. Right. We'll do one small example on uh, object is moving in a conveyor. So, let's take the sensors. Sensor over here. Let's take any sensor and just take this one. Just break it first since we have taken from the symbol factory. Keep it over here. Right? So for this, I'm going to give the fill color, you know, analog, fill color, going to take S1, right? So let's take S1 and give, when it is 0 to 10, it should be blinking. Like this. Let it be the common color, default one blue we have given, no? let it be like this, okay. Then after that, I am going to have the same sensor at the job out over here, which is having same thing, but now it is 90, 91, 91, like this, okay. And this is going to be 95. It should be the increasing order. So this is all we have seen in the previous session itself. Go for 98, 99 and this is going to be the 100. Fine. That's it. Right. So let's for filling. Okay. For filling I am going to have a tank kind of structure over here. So go for it. Go for tank. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Let's take a tank. Like this, we'll take. Yeah, we'll take this. Keep it over here. Right? So now this tank is getting, uh, you know, the liquid from some place. So for that, let's take a pipe and uh, give the reference.
right if you want take a valve also take one uh, vertical also because we will be using it down take this one or oh, let's take this one also and uh, this will be used over here fine take a vertical right the arrangement is very very important and it is very minute also like this let it be fine so let's take a valve valve we need two valves kind of solenoid wall Okay. just keep it like this fine and I think we need to have like this or better remove this place on vertical Make it this to front or this to back. That's it. Fine. So now we need to have a, you know, a container. Let's take a container. Container. take a can or you can take this also kind of jar little bottle whatever it is break it just keep it over here so this is the bottle which is going to move from this location to this side fine so first we have given uh, you know animation to this job in sensor and job out sensor let's give to this for horizontal movement fine so let's take this as s1 this is gonna be the s1 no so we need to give the corresponding range for this right 
so for the just measure it now it is 84 and I want to exactly stop at this place so it is 84 let's take like this 584 so it is 500 difference and uh, yeah nearly 490 I need to give here okay so 490 is gonna be this end 490 and this is just 30 so when I'm moving or oh, it will be 30 or 40 let it be 40 so whenever I'm moving the bottle from 0 to I mean uh, slider from 0 to 40 the bottle should move horizontally 490 so let's check how it is working so better check each and every time right this is changing color this is also changing color okay let's see yeah the bottle is exactly stopped at this place right we'll give a blink option also so that we can see it better go for runtime let's check okay 0 to 10 it is in this color okay okay instead of this i'll go for the blink so blink is when less than 10 or less than 11 right blink with these attributes fine blink invisible like this also we can give you yeah, okay okay and this not fill color go for blink so that we can see it in a better way this is is when above 90 fine above 90 got it guys now this when I have given 490 no let's give 480 so that be it will be exactly look placed at this place right so now I'm going to how this is going to stop means I'm going to have a position sensor here which is stopping my uh, conveyor uh, okay running so I'm going to have one more sensor which we can call that as position sensor so let's take this one reduce reduce the size so I'm going to keep it over here exactly here so whenever the bottle is reached this place this is gonna be stop the conveyor motor break it and this is gonna be blinking when is when above 40 and and the process the process of filling will be happening from is you know 40 to 60 like this still that it will be blinking fine go for it go for it so let's check how it is going to work yeah now the first one is blinking because the bottle is nearby move the bottle it is reaching 40 yes so this is not changing anything the color is not changing nothing is happening so we need to check with this one let's check out what is the issue go for it blink s when below 40 okay this should be above 40 no see i have done a mistake and s when below 60 right now it will be blinking and moreover I'm going to have the tank level to be visible here hash 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 go for analog display see it was taken for the previous pages that's what the tag was there so go for S1 now it will be blinking everything is fine now once the bottle is reached this place what should happen the tank uh, 
should be filling the bottle no so once the bottle is placed this is going to blink when means after 45 and below 55 that will be like this so 45 to 55 this is going to fill right so let's go for this one okay right so the bottle is reached from this place to this place now the new bottle i need to have here because i need to give the vertical you know horizontal option only once only right the bottle need to be placed here then the filling option should happen again the bottle need to move from this place to this location so i cannot use the same bottle so i should use the duplicate of this correct i should use the duplicate of this so this bottle gonna be take place here right so this going to visibility future visibility future this is below 40 after that this going to be invisible right so this going to be visible after 40 blink no sorry not blink visibility after 40 so let's give that as after 39 so that that will be invisible at uh, 39 this this gonna be visible at 39 right this is above for above 39 right and for this whatever i have given this is hmm, see s when below 40 correct this is the right term comparator should be proper so that you will get the expected output else it will not come so this when disable this horizontal now it's going to have the percentage fill percentage fill go for it so yes when from 45 to 55 so it is going to have the maximum fill right if you want you can give the fill color also go for it yes when so this is 45 46 47 48 give up to 55 okay so we have given 10 45 to 55 is for the filling process so you can give the numbers like this what color you want you can fill up choose that what color we can choose let's go for it now i this bottle will not uh, show the exact color because there is a option called some transparent thing so anyhow we'll give a try okay go for it go for it just check up to this let's see what is happening now this is blinking fine now i'm going to move when it is about about 10 this is stopped blinking okay when it reached 40 okay see something is happening over there so we need to give yeah when we are increasing this is decreasing so we need to give the down option in the filling right so let's change that go for it vertical from down right check for the visibility mm. 
I have seen two bottles at the time. Let's see. See here at thirty nine, both the bottles are visible. This should not be happening, right? Uh, here one mistake. What is the mistake? This is one, two bottles at the same time, and one more time. One more thing is, at forty five only it should start filling. So before that, that should be in the empty white bottle, right? So check out that. What is the issue over there? So I am going to visibility option is thirty nine. So it will be stop at thirty. Okay. So one thing is rectified, and another thing, this one, no, percentage fill, forty-five to fifty. Okay. Let's give this. This fill color is the issue, I think. Yeah. Initial also it is taking the same color. So let's disable this. Just disable this. Hmm. Now the two bottle issue is solved. Now from forty, this is going to blink. This one, this position sensor is blinking, and now when it is forty five, this is started filling. Can you see the color? Can you see some color over there? Yeah. So at fifty five, this that is stopped. Even the solenoid sensor is also solenoid is also stopped blinking because the filling is happened kind of right. And this is also stopped blinking. Position sensor is also stopped blinking. So at last hundred, this is blinking. Fine. So Check out the blinking option for this. So I have given sixty five now, sixty. So forty to sixty, it is blinking. Yeah, let it be sixty because after filling, it should need some time. After that only, it should start moving. Fine. So I'm going to give the location horizontal S one from sixty to hundred. It should start moving towards this side. Okay. Yeah. Can you see the color now? It is filling nicely. After that, it is moving. Yeah. The bottle is nearby, so I need to increase the di distance. I need to increase the distance so that it will be reached over here, and this will be blinking. Fine. Got it, guys. So it looks like a only one bottle moving from one place to another place, right? So we'll customize this. We'll customize this better. So for this one, just let's take a normal. Replace that. So from forty five to fifty five, it is filling, right? So from forty five to fifty five, it is filling. So we can do break it first. Break it. Check the color. This one you give this, okay? So from forty-five to fifty-five, this is going to be reduce, correct? So just go for vertical fill. From forty-five to fifty-five, up. Background color going to be like this. Check out this. Let's see this first. Then. 
then if any changes we want we'll do and this is break it see this and all I'm just customizing it okay just go for blink and yes when is above 45 and it is below 55 or 56 so blink with this attributes like the you know the liquid is filling over there so let's check out this right increase so yes can you see this one is reducing and this one is filling that's it see it is completely filled and it is moving it is blinking at the end so this is the simple example fine so you don't want me this is a solenoid wall which will be opening and closing and for this I need to increase the uh, length you now towards right I'm just writing 530 go for ok go for ok go for run time let's see move it it is increasing again it is moving right that's it it's very simple right if you want you can give text for all so that you can get the reference position sensor I'm just giving the blink option for all you can change the color also job in sensor job out Bank. Well, well, one. Okay. Bottle filling system. You can change the window color also. Change the properties, change the color, that's it, fine, so just practice this in a software, right, yeah, thank you guys, bye.